Hello and welcome to One Stop Co-op Shop Streamed, your one stop for co-op news and playthroughs. And today we are playing through Resident Evil with the designer, Sherwin. Hello. Hey, how's it Very going? Very good. How are you doing today? Do you know, it's been a wild ride over the last few days, but I'm getting there. I'm having fun. So you fun. said you were it's demoing awesome. it all day yesterday. Who are you? What were you doing demoing? Where at? Uh, so I did something with um, with Lance from um, Learn to Play Games, uh, and I was doing a few follow up things with the Yogs Cast, uh, which um, is a YouTube channel, a fairly massive one over here in the UK. Nice. Uh, I went to those guys on on Friday and blasted through some stuff, and then uh, we had some follow up stuff um, just to do yesterday. So it's cool. That is very cool. So yeah, no, you're you're on the whirlwind media tour, I guess. You know, it's it's almost like you're a. Uh... <laughs> you know actor and you got a new movie that's launching and you got to do the uh the media tour you know to to promote it before uh you know before the uh, premiere do you know i normally say to our marketing team like you know i, I literally use me however you need me to be in these campaigns to like you know to, to do good so they say you know what turn up and speak to these nice people here they're really cool so that's why that's I awesome do. um and literally I kind of just put my whole whenever we get to Kickstarter territory, I always just put my whole life on on pause and it's like, okay, everybody who's not involved in this Kickstarter, I will speak to you in two or three weeks, however long it is. Uh, I always need to disappear off the planet now. You may see me in a video. Between <laughs> yeah, yeah. You and can see it. me on TV. Just put it on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, something like that. I, I wish we were having that sort of crazy, crazy exposure. One of these days, the mainstream TV would be amazing. One of these days. Yeah, we'll Although, get that. Although I will say, yesterday we did our Extra Life event. So Extra Life, for those people who don't know, mm. is a uh, like charity fundraising event for children's hospitals. So we this is our second year mm. doing it. And uh, it was funny because on our Discord channel, people were uh, taking pictures and posting them. And I noticed somebody had us streamed to their TV. So we literally were on the big screen in their house. Um, uh -oh. It was it was wonderful. That's amazing. I had, although I don't know that I, I, you know, they say the TV ads or the camera ads like 10 pounds or whatever. I don't need any more pounds. I got to be honest. <laughs> Fair enough. I know one of our I know one of our community guys for Resident Evil was doing some some streaming stuff, obviously on a smaller scale than what you guys are doing, but uh, for them, so that's good. It's it's awesome to hear. That's awesome. So we're gonna play through Resident Evil today. We're gonna play through the demo scenario, and then we're gonna do some Q and A mm. after. So if you all have any questions, please feel free to ask us when you're done. So we've got a little bit of chat already. Uh, Riff has some peace signs. Hello, Riff. We got snow out there. It says good evening. Uh, so she's a definite uh, regular of ours, and we got China Blue mm -hmm. Scott. Hey all, and uh, who's here from the Kickstarter? So, so China, China's our um, China's one, our brand manager. Nice. Uh, so she's uh, she's one of us. Uh, jumps in the comments. So hopefully she'll be able to chat to people and help out. Yeah. So if people came from the Kickstarter link, go ahead and uh, and shout out, and please feel free to chat with us as we're playing. If you have any questions while we're playing, go ahead. Uh, but we're gonna try to save most of our Q and A for the end, and that way we don't we get a little bit of it uninterrupted gameplay. We know that never exactly happens because people have all kinds of questions, and then I get derailed. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we'll try to keep it on course as much as possible, and we'll see uh, when some cool stuff happens. If I if I get inspired to sing too, so I'm just warning you ahead of time that sometimes happens. Um, <laughs> when I get it, yeah, that's a, that's attention to detail. I, I did not know, but that sounds awesome. Let's do that. <laughs> I mean, it's not good. I just warned you about that as well. Uh, I just get, uh, okay. uh, you know, I just get excited sometimes. Uh, I, I might be a little overly excitable, but that's okay. Uh, so we got a couple people say that they're here from the uh, from the Kickstarter. Hello, hi. We got light out that's there, cool. and we've got live AC. Uh, Board Game Co is here. Hello. Uh, I've uh, I've hey board game co. I've literally just jumped off a uh, a demo of board game nice. co. I think I think we had a whale of a time playing the boss fight. Oh, okay. So when you're done here seeing the intro, go over there, go to board game co, and watch the boss fight. I think that would be cool. But without further ado, you mm. want to get started. So this is Resident Evil One. You've already done two and three, so you're doing like the mm. prequel now. There's nothing more Resident Evil than backtracking. <laughs> um, so yeah, exactly it, right? So um, yeah, we basically when we first came to doing the Resident Evil licenses, we kind of sat down with Capcom and we said, "Hey, should we do Resident Evil?" They went, "Yeah, but there's a remake of two coming out." We're like, "Ah!" So then we made Resident Evil two, sense. and then we finished that. We're like, "Okay, we should make Resident Evil now." They're like, "Well, there's Resident Evil 3's remake coming." We're like, ah. <laughs> "Let's do that." And then it gets to like, yeah, the next one. We're like, so we're like. 
So now you want us to do Resident Evil 4? They're like, well, it's the 25th anniversary of Resident Evil. We're like, ah, like that. That's literally it. We've had a few less hours in there. That's kind of how the conversation works. Nice. Board Game Co. <clears throat> Co said the uh, the video won't be up till Tuesday. So go Tuesday to Board Game Co. and check out their um, their playthrough of the boss fight. Today we're doing it live though. We we, we don't we don't do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we don't do delayed here. Um, our main channel we all definitely chaos do. All the this, time. Is, this is just live stuff. So uh, errors and all. Although usually I say if you catch any rule mistakes, let us know. I'll try to edit in or whatever else. But uh, I mean, if we have rule mistakes, that's on you. You're the designer here, right? So. <laughs> Yeah, I, it's kind of it. Like, I think we'll probably be okay. I've, uh, I've, I probably know what I'm doing now. Hopefully, good. I mean, if you guys catch me out, all the better. But you know, I'm pretty sure I'll be good. All right, so, so that's um, the goal. So yeah, is, so uh, if anybody can catch the designer yeah. out on playing his game wrong, then uh, you know, we'll have to, uh, I don't know, do some drinks together at the like, next convention. Yeah, if, if you if you catch me out, if you catch me out, as they say, like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> um, it's probably the thing. Right, that's the way of doing it. Nice. Um, cool. Okay, so. How familiar with Tabletopia are you? You know, because uh, I can give you a broad overview. I, I, I'm not. pretty familiar with Tabletopia, but if there's anything that like specially needs to be done, I know how to zoom in with the space bar. I know how to zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. Yep. Um, I know, I, I know how to flip stuff. I got that. Uh, <laughs> okay. But cool. yeah, I always get confused because okay. I do so, a lot on Tabletop Simulator, so I do um, right. every once in a while it catches me off guard. It's kind of like working on PC and Apple, right? So, yeah, no, no worries. So, um, the quick things that might be super useful to you, uh, you can, um, if you hold and left-click, uh, then, sorry, left-click and hold, you can move around the map a bit yep. quicker. I love the way I'm now doing it on mine. Uh, the other one is you right-click, you can change camera angle, which you're looking around. Uh, so, that might be super useful nice. too if you haven't already done. Uh, the other one is you can set a fixed camera angle. Uh, if you find a position you want to, uh, you can then shift and then a number key, and that will save it as a preset. And then whenever you want to go back to that, you can literally just press the number and it will zip you straight back to it again. Look at that. Uh, so normally, pretty so pretty good ones is a top down of the main map yep. area uh, is normally a terrible one. And then one when we've decided which character you're going to play of your character dashboard, which brings us nicely to which character do you think you're going to want to play? I'll play one of these two down here just because that is the easiest for me to view right now. So. Fair enough. So if you're not a Resident Evil uh, fan, I can roughly go over what yep, these are. Go for it. So Chris Redfield is uh, much more of a kind of utility character. You've got the ability to burn corpses. You have a lighter with you. That will sounds very grim thing to say to somebody. Well, I mean, there's that will make right? more sense as well. <laughs> Yeah, something like that. So uh, so you've got the ability to do that from Go. Uh, you've got the ability to headshot zombies every so often if you uh, if you overkill them. And you also, if we find any defense items, you're pretty good at using okay. those. Uh, Barry, by comparison, is more of a... He's less evasive uh, than the others, so he's not as nimble, which might come back to uh, literally bite you <laughs> um, a little bit later on. But um, at the same time, Barry's much better at attacking things than everything else. He's much more accurate than the other, the other characters. Um, he's also got a nice ability that if he's being overwhelmed, he's much better at shrugging off enemies. Um, he also comes with extra ammunition. So depends on which one of those two playstyles you think is Let's best. Let's go with for you. Barry. Okay, it's always a good choice being Barry. Uh, so I will quickly grab. Who do I think I want? To... I'm going to be Chris. I haven't played. We haven't done a Chris and Barry playthrough. I don't think at all of this. So uh, sorry, Jill. There you go. I'm just going to move you out of the way and drop down, Mr. Barry. Uh, one thing I will say: uh, Tabletopia, as much as I love the ability to play uh, people like yourself, obviously remotely, um, can be a touch clunky. So apologies in advance. Yes. If we accidentally table flip or send anything flying through the sky, <laughs> um, that is not part of the board game. Uh, launching tiles through the air or making things float or explode. Um, just a heads up. We tried doing that, but it's just very expensive production-wise, so we're not going to be doing that. Um, All right, cool. so we got some notes. So, uh, with that in mind, Riff is out here saying snake sorry, enemies go. unlocked in the Kickstarter, and he's got snake emojis, so I guess. <laughs> Ah, uh, we've literally just dropped a note as part of our story. We're doing a really interesting thing. If if you don't yeah, mind, I'll talk to you a little bit about how the Kickstarter yep. works. So uh, we're trying something really interesting with the Kickstarter this time around. Um, it's what we wanted to achieve is have a celebration of everything Resident Evil. So Resident Evil is a game which is really about exploring the mansion, the Spencer Mansion, with you know when you first get in there, dodging around through enemies and all sorts of things like that. And then basically, what we really wanted to do was create this idea that backers are exploring the mansion at the same time as us so we're all moving around and doing our own thing 
And basically, we wanted to create an open world Kickstarter, which is absolutely nuts and bonkers to try and explain to anybody. So but I'll, I'll give it a shot. So right at the start of the Kickstarter, everyone is in the main hall. Um, and at this point, we have a bit of narrative. You know, hey, you've just arrived in the main hall. You've been chased out by like zombie dogs, and monsters and stuff. You've just landed here trying to get refuge. Suddenly, you hear a gunshot off to the left. You hear some footsteps upstairs. Which way do you want right. to go? Oh, uh, cue, to, cue by the way to stand Thanks. up, Barry. Sorry uh, about that. Right. I'm like, yeah. I, I, just, no, that's okay. I was trying to get him back to where he was because I'm trying to look at these sculpts. They are beautiful. I assume these are renders of the actual sculpts here. Uh, they are, but our sculpting team are very, very talented, and a lot of the models come out looking just like oh, this. Oh wow! So, um, yeah, we one of the, one of the things I know we we're very, very good at all the way from the start of Steam Forged is we our sculpting team is phenomenal. Um, I, I I really love their work. They are the most talented bunch of people I think we have. So um, big shout out okay, to them. Okay, sorry about that. But yes, um, but, so you're yeah. playing through this yeah, campaign no, no, on the Kickstarter. Um, so every 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 day backers uh, get a choice of where they want to go. So in this case, in this particular case, they chose to go upstairs to hear, you know, investigate the footsteps. So they went upstairs, and as a result, they met a new character uh, who gets added to their pledge because wherever they go, whatever they find there, that gets added into their. Oh, that's pledge. really cool. And then they have. Yeah, so basically we give them like a, not just not quite 24 hours, we give them to a 12 o'clock the next day to vote, and that chooses where they are going to turn up to. Once we've done that, we count all the votes, see wherever they've gone, that's where we go to, they add that stuff in. Um, and then obviously we've been progressing through the campaign that way, just exploring together and unlocking stuff as we go, and telling the story of the backer's journey through the campaign at, towards the end of the game. Which is obviously super fun, super engaging, and yeah, it's it's really cool seeing so many people super invested in it. Like people are coming back to the Kickstarter every day just to catch up on the next bit of the story and vote for where they want to go to next and other stuff. But we're also doing some cool stuff where we're unlocking. So some of our characters have what's called an advanced version, uh, where they kind of imagine if you have a character that has a significant narrative event happen to them, so they kind of survive a you know an attack by a horde of zombies or something or other, or you know they they discover a piece of oh, information like or something up. or other. Basically, yeah, they kind of level up. They get a new version. That's cool. And what we've been doing is we've we've got twelve different characters in this game, and we've been giving our backers as as we've been exploring, we've been discovering these these characters with us occasionally we trigger something called an advanced character vote and when we do that everyone gets to vote on which character they want to become advanced from all the ones they've saved so far the good news is the one with the most votes gets to advance and they basically are going to narratively survive this the night as it were the one who the least votes well they're not going to make it. oh no so we've got so what's really cool is we've got loads of people in engaged in this. Like, you know, we've got people role playing as the actual characters in the chat going, Please save me. I'm trapped in a cave full of monsters. I need to get out. We've got like other people who are kind of, you know, negotiating with each other, like, oh my god, like, you know, we've got a team of voters here. We'll vote with you know, we'll go with your character this time. You go with our one next oh, time. And that's performing sort of alliances, Re things really like that. Cool. That's neat. You've got it. It's really cool. The the community is the Resident Evil board game community is one of the most incredible communities I've ever known. They're really, really invested, really passionate, and really just embrace the games in a way that you know it's it's very humbling. Well, and if and you want to, they've really if you run. Want to join that community, we do have a uh, link in the show notes that you can go get right to the Kickstarter from there, and you have four more days, so you can become part of this community. Mm. You can uh, affect the end of this story. So that's pretty neat. Uh, exactly. You absolutely can. Yeah, I mean, we've still got... There's a lot going on those next four days in terms of votes and stuff. There's going to be really intense. So definitely recommend All that. All right, so we've got some... Uh, we've got some... Uh, what was it? Uh, pandering out here. Not pandering. What are they... It's like trying to get votes out here. Uh, so people... people uh, <laughs> let's advance. Rebecca, it's... we got out here. Uh, we got some hearts for that. Yeah. We got some... Uh, we got one green man says, Sherwin, stop killing stars members, please. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're sorry. I've just turned your comments section into a campaign trail. Right, I'm that's sorry. okay. That's okay. <laughs> and uh, China says uh, advanced character vote is coming shortly. So let's look forward to that. Well, uh, the next one, the next one is coming up now. So yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's figure out how to play cool. this game for people who don't know anything about it. Uh, so this is Resident Evil. Yeah. Um, we are going to take two characters, and what is our objective here? Yeah, so this uh, this uh, where my blue hand is hovering yep. around here. This is the exit door. So we the objective of this scenario is we need to escape. We escape by stepping on there, and then we're just simply removed from the playing area, and we've escaped. Now we both need to do that in order to succeed. A quick thing: uh, the ways we lose this um, this scenario. 
One, it's completely cooperative, which I heard you guys are quite pop, uh, quite yes, big on. Yes. Um, so it's something where if one if one of the characters dies, we both lose. So we need to watch each no other's No player backs. elimination, I like uh, it. The other thing, no player elimination. The other one is if the tension deck uh, runs out. Oh, you're a terror. Just literally running around, just occasionally bashing the models <laughs> over. Um, so, yeah, so there's a tension deck, which I'll show you a little bit later on. If that runs out... Then it's game over because the idea is the whole you know, the whole mansion is overrun and we've basically run out of time and then we're safe to hide anymore. So that's the thing we need to okay. be aware of. Now, um, otherwise, so the only other things really worth going to at this stage uh, is each of these tiles. Obviously, this is quite a small playing area. This will expand as we go out and okay. explore. In true Resident Evil fashion, obviously we can tell that we need to get to that exit point, but the way to that exit point is locked by this sword key here. This door that actually leads to that room is locked. So we're not going to tell you where to find the sword key. We're going to have to explore and find that out ourselves. Um, each of these tiles is surrounded by a red line. That's a wall. So you can't move across a wall. So, for example, Chris couldn't just go, I'll go this way right. across this Makes wall, sense. really, because there's a wall in the wall. Um, so you have to go through. The only way you can leave tiles is through open doors. Uh, and obviously we have a few door tokens on here, which I'll explain. But in the meantime, how about I stop talking about stuff like that and we actually start playing and we'll see where we Perfect. get to. Cool. Uh, so if I take the first turn, I'll talk you through the phases of how it works and you know, then roll into your turn and we'll Perfect. go from there. Okay. So uh, player turns, it goes basically it's always player turns. There's no enemy turns. They'll get to react and do stuff as part of what, you know, as we run around, they'll they'll react to what Perfect. we're doing. So uh, it'll go with me. There's three phases to a character's turn. The first one is the action phase. And that's when you move around, you attack things, you open shut doors, you search for items. Anything where if you were playing the video game, you'd have to pick up a controller and start pushing a button. That happens in this yep. phase. Uh, you can do up to four actions in this phase. And you can do an action you know, once, twice, three, four times, as many as, however suits yeah. you. You can't do more than, you know, so I could move four times, I could move twice and attack twice. I could open and shut a door a whole bunch of times if I want to be a weird troll. <laughs> Whatever way works for me. So in my turn... Uh, first thing I'm going to do is move... Uh, sorry, you're Barry, aren't you? So I think I'm Chris. So I'm going to go one to here. So I've moved yep. one square. Uh, that's uh, Diagonally, by the way, is the same as orthogonally. So you can just move as you want. So one square, that's my first action. For my second action, I'm going to go to here. Yep. For my third action, I'm going to go to this square. And then for my last one, I'm going to open this door. Are you really going to open that door with a zombie on the other side? I am going to open oh this door. Oh my goodness. I, I know what you think. I know what you're thinking, and that's that's kind of silly. But it's really, really good for demonstrating how this next phase works. <laughs> which is the enemy, so, which is obviously about to eat your brains. Which is the enemy phase. <laughs> you got it, right? It's almost like we've built this demo being able to sort of tell people how to do stuff. So basically you have the reaction phase. Once you've done that, you do the reaction phase. Now I'm just gonna quickly shut this door for the purpose of explaining this. This is this is where most of the complexity comes from. Everything's very intuitive in this game. It's very fast paced, but this is the bit where it takes the most explaining. So in the reaction phase, any enemies that are on the same tile as the active character, i.e. that's me, um, or a linked tile, and I'll touch base on that in a second, will perform what's called a reaction. Okay. And a reaction is they'll either move, to, you know, if they're in range to attack you, they'll attack. And if they're not, then they'll move towards the closest character so they can then, you know, be in a position to attack later on. Now, so you don't have to uh, worry about everything tile? on the board. You just really have to worry about the ones yeah. that are on your tile or next to your tile, basically. You got well, yeah. If they can, if they can hear you or see you, Makes basically. Sense. Now, obviously, in this case, if this was the board state, then nothing would happen in this phase because these guys out here, they don't know I'm here. They can't see me. They can't hear me. They've got no idea whatsoever. Right. However, because I open this yeah, door, no, they can on. now hear me. So <laughs> any, you've got it. So any tiles that are linked to your tile by one or more open doors. So we could have a chain of tiles all the way going all the way around the whole thing around the whole map and everything would react because the sound echoes through all of the rooms so door discipline is really important so in this the, game so it's not just uh, yours terms, or adjacent tiles it's anywhere where there's an open door that could link to the tile that you're on currently you've got it. Ah, yeah, got exactly it. it so you've got to be very careful with stuff. and there's going to be some interesting decision points later on for us when we actually get into the game proper yeah. so anyway so because of this uh, we now have reactions from these guys so I'll start with the one closest to me, and if you wanted to uh, quickly wander over to the enemy cards, yep. uh, they're just where my blue hand is, and I'll uh, show you. You can double click on a card, and it'll come large on the screen, by the way, so that might be quite useful yep. for or, you for uh, your, the space uh, key. your audience. As suits you. So this is a zombie card. Uh, just to give you a quick breakdown of how it works. So the rows, uh, the row of icons along the top. Uh, the first one is the threat level. Uh, that one's not going to be too much importance to us right now, but that's roughly how dangerous the enemy is. Higher number means yeah, it's yep. more dangerous. 
the next one is how many squares it moves. Got it. And when it moves, the next one is how much health it has. So this one's got one. The lowly zombie isn't necessarily the toughest thing in the world. Yep. Now it has a special rule underneath this, uh, which, despite what I've just said, is tough hide. So that was a immediate one where China's going to be laughing at me. <laughs> um, but in the meantime, we then move over to the attack profiles. So the attack profiles, how they work, there's a basic attack is the top one, and its special attack is below it. I'll get back to special attacks when they become a bit more relevant later on. For the moment, we need to look at that top one. Uh, so the hand that's kind of with the swiping arrows yep. next to it, that is the range. In this case, zero. it's range zero, so it can only attack if it's Got in the it. same zone as you. Uh, sorry, same uh, same square as you. Uh, then the other, this, the other one is the effects it does if it hits you, which I'll one talk damage. about a little bit later on when no, we get that. It's one yeah. damage. You've got it. See, told you it was And intuitive. the bottom one is so one there we are. and so, maybe it pushes you or something? Assault. Uh, assault, so it, it gets into your square if it's not got already it. there. So the idea is the zombie lunges up and grabs hold Easy of you. Easy enough. So, yeah, so this zombie, going back to the board, uh, is not in range to attack me um, because it's, it's not in the same square. So instead it will move towards a closer character. That is me, and it will just move over to here. Now this zombie over here is definitely not in range to attack me, so it's also going to move, and it's going to stagger closer like that. If ever there's a tie, by the way, it will go to the active character first. Got it. So if it's, if it's an equidistant. So, cool. And that's the reaction phase over. If there are any other enemies out there. They don't know we're here yet, so that's fine. Uh, this corpse over in the corner is not something we're going to be too worried about at the moment because it's a oh, corpse. Oh, sure, yeah. And so the last thing... horror game, you don't worry about corpses laying on the floor. Of course not. Why would you? I, I, I don't know. I don't want to say anything too much, but <laughs> I mean, that corpse has stood up in every single play for I've done it. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I've so never we'll played this before, but I can already tell you what happens when there's corpses laying <laughs> on the floor in a zombie game. This is, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and this A, is that something okay. we can interact with? Is that what that is over there? Uh, that's, an item, that's an item token. You'll notice that we have uh, an item, three item decks up Sweet. here. Uh, next to where the cards were, we have yep. a, uh, a red one, a green one, and a blue that's one. A blue one. Uh, that just dictates which one you draw. Um, so the last thing we do, is the tension phase. The tension phase, you draw a card from the tension deck, uh, which I'm just going to do now, and flip over. And then basically, there are three types of cards in this deck before I flip this over. There's green cards. They are all clear. Nothing really bad is happening. They've got a bit of flavor text on them to set the scene, but that's it. There's yellow cards. They indicate something unusual has happened, and they normally force us to make a difficult decision of some description. Yeah, maybe they'll uh, mean that we, uh, we don't want to attack enemies for a turn, or we don't want to leave our current tile or something. And then there's red tiles, which are the flat-out zombie just smash through a window to eat your face kind of cards. We definitely don't want to see the red yeah, cards. No, it doesn't sound like... Now, did so, you uh, uh, shuffle this deck? Do <laughs> uh, you know what? I have, but just for the sake of you, viewers at home, I'm going to hit the shuffle there button. There we go. All there right. we go. Right. I'll do, I'll do the encounter deck as well, just People for a who... So I don't know if you wanted to read out the uh, the text in your best spooky right. voice, or you All want me clear. to do it. Uh, so... You pause, ear strained for even the slightest sound. Nothing beyond your own ragged breathing. So that means you're safe for now. Are you sure about that? No. There's two zombies here. <laughs> I'm not sure at all about that. It may not be your ragged breathing. Right. Um, okay, so... So let me ask, the back of these cards, uh... there's this spooky open door. Uh, is that official hmm. artwork or... Uh, yeah, that's official that's artwork. Really that's really nice um, looking. That is, uh, I wasn't sure if it came straight from the game or from the video game. Or uh, no, this is this was made for us by our artist Reese, um, who uh, makes all the tiles and everything else. Um, yeah, we've been blessed to work with some incredibly talented people on the Resident Evil series. That's the uh, so the tension deck has remained the same since Resident Evil Two uh, onwards, and uh, yeah, it's been um, yeah it's it's been thing where I think. The door opening sequence. Anybody who's played any of the Resident Evil games, that's a really important part of of um, of what these games are. Because you know that sort of that loading screen where you go up to the next room, you open the door and it creaks open. You wonder what's inside, what's around the next right. corner. That really perfectly fits like the tension deck mechanics. So. so if we close this door, is this zombie over here going to forget that we were even uh, around? Yeah, he's, he's, he's yeah, he's kind of he's a bit like a goldfish. He's right. kind of sort of short uh, attention <laughs> he sees span. He what's in front of him. So that's and this fine. is a one way door coming yeah, exactly. in. I assume. So just to resummarize. Yeah, so we can't go from there. Uh, yeah, just, sure. Sorry about that. Just to resummarize, we take four actions. Then the uh, yep. anybody linked to us through open doors is going to activate, and yep. then we draw attention yep. card. That's correct. It's pretty, pretty straightforward, straightforward game. Absolutely. Uh, there's there's some a little there's a couple of little things that are going to happen when you start thinking about making attacks and stuff, but we can talk about that as we no. go. That will break that. Can I attack but, into yeah. a space that you're in? 
Yeah, there's no friendly fire to worry about. You are going to need line of sight. Uh, to line of sight, you have as long as you draw, you can draw a line from the center of your square to the center of the square the target's in uh, without crossing over any intervening walls or closed doors. You're good. So you couldn't shoot from where you were a minute ago, but where you've just gone to there, in that cinematic moment, you definitely Well, can and shoot the nice there. part is that you've even blocked off the corners here, so you can see line of sight can't go through this. If you know, Sometimes it's intuitive, and sometimes it's not in these... Mm. Um, these games i think your your graphic designer your artist yeah. did a great job um marking off no you clearly can't see through this diagonal over here um exactly it. so all right so do i want to shoot or do i want to stab can i stab from an adjacent space it looks like well, it's range one right yep so unfortunately you're not gonna be able to stab from there but i'm also going to say barry is much better at shooting stuff he's a firearm specialist so you actually have one of your special rules uh, which is, if memory serves, accurate. I'm going to double yep. check, make sure we've got the same name for it. Accurate. Were they? Yep. You treat the large evade result as a double hit result, which makes you much better with your handgun than you are with your All knife. All right, let's shoot him then. Um, so I'd recommend that. Okay, cool. So let's uh, let's just quickly highlight that handgun card, and what I can do is I can talk you through how yep. that works. Um, so handgun card, if you look at it, the top symbol in the top left just simply indicates it's, it's a weapon. Yep. Uh, the one on the top right is the ammunition you have for it, so you can start off with 15 bullets. Uh, dropping down to the next row, uh, you've got a target in rest kill. That means with the range of it. Now, this is line of sight, so you, as long as you have line of sight, you can attack. Uh, the next one is how many bullets, uh, sorry, how many uh, dice and the color of the dice so that you roll blue. when you make an attack with this thing. One blue. And then you've got two other symbols which are to do with what happens when you roll those results on the dice. The last symbol on that little bottom yep. bar is the rapid fire symbol. That's quite unique to the handgun. That means when you make an attack with this gun, rather than just rolling the, the one shown there, you can spend up to three bullets. And for each bullet you spend, you roll one blue dice. Ah, gotcha. So that's quite unique for the handgun. So you can sort of snap off three shots if you want, or two if you want a bit more conservative, or one if you want to kind of you know, conserve ammo. Crucial, th excuse me, crucial thing about Resident Evil. This is a game of survival horror. It's a lot about resource management. If you try to kill every enemy in your path, you'll run out of bullets really quickly, and then you'll be really sad. Yes. So you've got to think very carefully about how you want to manage this. Um, so how likely am I to hit with a blue dice? Uh, so a blue dice is effectively a six plus uh, to actually to get the kill. Uh, so there's one double hit on there, there's two single hits, and the rest are evade symbols. So to hit is a four plus, uh, to kill is a six plus. So rolling more dice obviously you know increases that quite a lot. Now because you're Barry, you actually kill on a five plus because you treat that large evade symbol as a second double. Okay, hit. and that also means I'm more so likely makes you to hit better. as well. I'm gonna do two. Let's exactly. go ahead and shoot with two. Okay. Okay. Cool. So you drop down your handgun ammo by two. Uh, you double click on that, and then you should have an orange uh, arrow up it. here. You can drop Oops. it down. So that drops you down to thirteen. Yep. Cool. And then uh, you can select, you can hold down shift. Yeah, shift uh, and highlight. Could, I always yeah. got to remember that. You've got it. And then press R Boom, double. Is that a double? Oh, look at that, like a pro. Uh, so that's not quite, that's, so looking at your handgun card, uh, the first one, that single hit, uh, means that you've got a push, which means you can push that zombie into any adjacent square. Okay. Uh, and then the other one is a is a wound, when the zombie goes hit one wound, so that will be enough to kill it. Nice. Now, the importance of that, is the special rule the zombies have, which means that when you kill one, they leave a corpse behind. Um, corpses, as you've already identified, aren't great things in this game. Treading on, treading on a corpse is something which occasionally it might stand up and attack. Right. So it's worth using that push to maneuver it however yeah, so best you want. So you room? could, for example... You could do. I mean, probably if you push it out of the room, that means we both have to tiptoe over it when it comes to the next turn. Whereas if you push it behind me... Ah. I won't have to well, roll then, yeah. the dice to go, go over it. It'll just be literally yep, sitting there push like... Push it back to me, then. Tremendous. Okay. So that's uh, one, two. Uh, one quick thing has happened is what's called an out-of-sequence reaction. Because you made an attack, and this zombie's on a linked tile, it heard the attack, and it's going to go... and come once closer. Sound effects are not mandatory. Just throwing it out there, but they do make it a lot of fun. So, I mean, we know what's going to happen next. We're shooting them again. Oh, you're going to attack again? <laughs> We're shooting the next oh, one. Oh, look at this. So, so I like this bit where I say, hey, do you know what? You need to be careful of ammunition. You're like, okay. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. This is, this, is, uh, this is fine. This is fine. Nothing to see here. You know, I got a knife too. When I run out of bullets, that's what that's for. Okay. I like your style. So where are we looking at that? So you've got to push. 
So that means you can push this zombie into an adjacent square. The other evade symbol just means it's going to hit the zombie; it won't care, or it hits a you know hits a wall or whatever else. So you can't cross over a corner oh, yes. on that one. So You're you have right. to be back forwards yep. or backwards. I just commented on how great your graphic design is, and I just totally ignored it. Uh, <laughs> all right. Are... Oh, you're just testing it. You've... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, if I step into this corpse okay. space, that might not be the best thing either. Uh, uh... Yeah, but well, you're going to have to do it at some yep. point. All right, so it let's depends do on it. How bright you're feeling. I like your style. Uh, so you roll this black dice, yep. and if you get that umbrella symbol, it's going to stand up. Anything else, you're good, good to go. go. Good. Cool. There you go. Uh, so that was what? Uh, one, two, three, yep. four. So perfect. That's your four actions. So now it's reaction phase. This zombie is going to lurch closer. And tension deck time. All right. So let's draw the top one. Oh, that's yellow. All Ooh. right. Deepening paranoia. Yeah, what we got? Uh, you see movement from the corner of your okay. eye. The shadows hide enemies waiting to strike. If the next character is on the same tile at the start of their tension phase as they began their turn on, they must draw two additional cards. That doesn't seem good. But actually, it doesn't seem bad because no. you're right at the edge of our tile. So I think we're fine. Yeah, it's, yeah I think that's going to force me to uh, to move about a bit, which is cool. All right, so wait. I should put this in front of you because so... you're the next character. You got to deal with that. Yeah, super useful. And I'll, um, I'll move around. Um, okay, well... Okay, Chris. Well, in which case, we're going to flee to this room here. Uh, I'm then actually going to try something interesting. I'm going to get into the same square as the zombie. Okay. So I'm going to go two to there. Uh, I'm then going to attack the zombie as well. Let's spend some bullets. Uh, I think I'm going to spend three. Oh, you're short range. This zombie could be a pain. Yeah, this zombie could be a pain for us. Now, because I'm in the same square as the zombie, if I miss, it's going to bite me um, because, you know, it's not safe running around shooting zombies point blank range. But... <laughs> But the flip side is, um, if I succeed, I'm going to be able to push it miles away from me, which I quite like. So let's see. So three dice and double push. So because I've hit it, it's not going to be the same thing. I'm going to push it back towards oh, you. Oh, thanks for that. I, I totally that sounds, appreciate it. <laughs> that sounds mean. It sounds mean, but there's a, there's a method to my madness. I mean, trust there's me. some madness to your method uh, as well, I think. <laughs> uh, so I've moved twice I've done that and then for my third action I'm just going to open this door okay so now it's reaction phase uh, let's have a quick look at that top card of the tension deck no we don't need to oh sorry it's down here isn't it for mine uh, so we don't need to worry about any special attacks just yet um, some of these cards have an effect that will trigger special attacks uh, but not any of these just yet so that's good uh, and then what's going to happen is the zombie instead is going to move towards you it's going to end up in your square so I'm going to just drop it down to there uh, cool. By the way, Board Game Co. Time. is uh, very encouraging. You'll be fine, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Uh, let's have a quick look. Oh, it's another yellow card. Uh, look at the closest tile where there are enemies but no characters. Remove the enemy on tile with the highest threat level and place them on this character tile on the closest thing. Because we can't resolve that, uh, we discard that. That's a good time to have got that card, though. Okay, so hold on. Draw, so remove the enemy cards. Sure. on the tile with the highest threat level and place them on this character's yep. tile. The only enemy. Yeah, but we did. Some... Got it. Yep. Yeah, is on the is basically uh, on the same tile as you, so that doesn't have any Got effect, it. which is encouraging. It does mean because we couldn't resolve it, we draw two replacements and resolve them instead. So the first one is all clear, and the second one. Let's go down here. Another all clear. Also all clear. Nice. Well, it's it's all clear where Chris is. It's great. Yeah, um, he's pushed so all the zombies Barry. back toward me. That's that's what's going on here. It's your Barry, you'll be fine. <laughs> that's what they all say. We love Barry. Barry's so back good. to me. Anyway, over to you. Go on, Barry. All right. Yeah. So here's a couple of choices you could do. You could attack the zombie. We don't have yep. to do that. The other option is you could try to just move past it. If you're trying to move past it, you basically make an evade yep. roll. Um, if you succeed, then you get to carry out the action as normal. If you fail. It will bite you. You'll take some damage. But then you will get to push it off of you, which means you'll push it away from your square, which is pretty good. So either way, you're going to be able to then be free to run life. past. Is that what this is? Uh, no, you have five life. So if you look at this bar, okay. it basically is divided into five little yep. sections. So uh, it will drop down there. So you've got a bit of health going on. So what's this then? I will say we don't necessarily have any healing items just yet, but um, we'll get there. These are your kerosene tokens. So... Um, as I said before, we can set fire to corpses. Uh, Barry's obviously only carrying around a hip flask or something, but um, the re you know, I've got a bit more of me. But basically, every time we burn a corpse, 
uh, we spend one of those tokens to get rid of it. We also have to have something that will obviously start a fire. I have a lighter, which would do Great. the job. So at some point, you can't do anything with that at the moment unless you find a source of fire. But so it's obviously not like you can action uh, movies later where on I can shoot the, shoot the gas and turn it and light it on fire, which is like the most r- not ridiculous this thing ever. Did... <laughs> okay. I'm not sure that's a thing that we can happen in this game. I mean, Resident Evil's done some fairly ridiculous things, but no shooting gas right. just yet. All right. Well, I'm going to use two more bullets. We're, we're, we're blasting away. Barry says, I have one job, okay, let's do it. and that's to blow things up. So Barry's going to do that. <laughs> and that's to spend boom. as much ammo as possible. That turns into a hit, wow, right? literal boom. You've so got you got to push it first. So you've got to push as well, so you yep. could... Yeah, do you want to push it down the corridor? Yep. There you and go. Then... I'll grab a corpse token if you uh, move the zombie. Yep. Sounds good. Teamwork. Perfect. There you go. See, Barry has got one job. It's just kill everything. Now, we moves. open this the door. One quick do thing, we have to do because anything you... about that? Uh, we don't necessarily just okay. yet, uh, but because Barry made an attack in the same square as a corpse, you do need to roll that black dice and see whether the corpse stands up. No, of course not. Okay, in which case you're fine. So that door leads off the map, obviously, as we've yep. seen. Now, that can be, well, when we go off of there, we've got this green card uh, to the bottom here, which actually shows a map of, of all the potential. Well, that's a numbered area. So this is, although the map isn't on play at the moment, it's not a randomized thing. Uh, it's just something where it's just hidden information, what's waiting yeah. there waiting for us. So if you try to move through there, uh, I'll draw the corresponding card. We'll lay out the tiles and whatever's waiting for us, and then you'll step through. Perfect. Or you could ignore that and go straight for the item in the corner, whatever suits you. Well, all right, so I've done one action. I moved away. That's two actions. Now, and does then, this corpse try to grab me as I leave? Yep. Uh, no, Just when no, you go you in. You didn't end your action in the same square. So. All, All right. right, so you and I are going to sh- buddy up and share the same space because that'll end my four actions. Okay, and tremendous. Now I can go uh, so, way. no reactions, too? Yeah, I like your stop. So, no reactions, uh, straight to the uh, straight to the tension Now, deck. let me ask you, does this little symbol here um, under us, or I guess there's more over here, like, this symbol there are indeed there's, i notice there's one per time so these are the there are indeed there's a couple that have a couple on them these are spawn points uh they're the little biohazard symbol it's a nice nod to the japanese name of the yep. game and then basically whenever we spawn enemies for whatever reason on these tiles they go on the biohazard oh, symbols so we're right at a spawn point nice <laughs> all right yeah we're just hanging yeah. out on the spawn point all right well it, uh that is my turn there's no enemies to react because somebody done killed them all uh, yeah, you're a hero, so, Barry. So now I'm drawing a card, and it's all clear because why wouldn't it be? Tremendous. And and we're not going to okay. read the story on all these cards just because we want to save that for you. That's certainly something I recommend, though, for your home games. I would definitely recommend mm. reading through the flavor text stuff like that. It looks like they, you put a lot of time and effort in. And I know we were talking a little bit beforehand um, how you um, you know your writing is how you started with um, Steam Forge mm. games, right? Yeah, I was lead writer when I first started, and um, I think it's definitely a fun creative outlet I've had. The same as what the Kickstarter from the story there has been. Like, it's been super fun to kind of create some immersive text in it. Um, it's worth pointing out, even the green cards are kind of grim because we are in a zombie infested mansion, just as a heads up, everybody. <laughs> there really aren't any kind of, oh, everything's lovely. Yeah, it's great. There's everything is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> See, you I told it. you I'd start yeah. singing when Unless I got excited. Zombies. Oh, there you go. See, I'll take that as a uh, as a nod that you're enjoying yourself. I am. I am. So, uh, with that in mind, uh, my turn. Steven says, this I game is gonna going to be fun. To... It's not going to be fun. It's already fun. <laughs> See? I like I like this. So, I'm going to go to here, and then I'm going to demonstrate how that burning corpse mechanic is, because you've spooked me with that previous thing. So, I do have a lighter as Chris, uh, and I have one of these tokens here. Uh, the lighter means I can discard this token, as I'm just doing yep. over here. And then I can remove any corpses in the adjacent square. So goodbye, Mr. Corpse. I was not enjoying your presence. Let's so we'll drop it down here because I'm sure they'll be back. Cool. So that's one action. Two actions set fire to the And you corpse. can do that because of the lighter. Spend uh, one fuel to remove each corpse I can in do that. either the same yep. square and adjacent square as your character. This card is not discarded after being used because it's not out of lighter You've fluid. Of course. You've got it. So uh, now I've done that. So that's one, two, three, and my last action. I'm going to pick up this item. So I remove the token from the from the uh, from the tile, and then I Flame grab thrower. the corresponding color Flame card. Let's find out. <laughs> if I am, I'll give it to you. Oh, a dagger. Uh, no, it's a dagger. That's super useful. So the dagger is a defense item. It's a new thing for Resident Evil that you haven't seen in Resident Evil two or three. Um, and basically, it means when I get attacked, I can discard this card to avoid damage from the attacks. So I just stick a dagger in the thing instead. 
Now, that actually synergizes quite well with Chris because Chris, one of Chris's special rules is when I use that, instead of discarding it, I roll one of those blue dice. If I get that large evade symbol, I get to keep the dagger. Nice. So there's definitely lots cool. of um, of uh, petitioning in the chat for their favorite characters. That is for <laughs> sure. We definitely started a, a, a riot out here. Um, man, uh, I'm I, sorry. I feel like we're in a mansion right now with uh, with people just shouting to their favorite <laughs> characters. This one must live. Uh, it's pretty fun. So I mean, I would assume. Well, getting... well, welcome to our Kickstarter for the last. Yeah, welcome to our Kickstarter for the last four years. Yeah, I was going to say. I'm assuming you're getting lots of that on the Kickstarter too. If we're getting it here. Uh, it's yeah, but it's it's all what's what's really nice about it is it's super well natured. Like everyone's having fun with it, oh, which course, is cool. Yeah. Like I. Uh, and and that's the best part. Like people really are enjoying themselves. So, and speaking of flamethrowers, we literally just unlocked your character Barry with a flamethrower earlier today. Nice. So, um, so your actual timing on that was pretty good. I mean, I, I knew. Anyway, that. so totally not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's an awesome model. You should check I it definitely out. Definitely will. I'm so, um, so we just done those two things. So that's mine. Yeah. Uh, no reactions because Barry has killed, killed everything. everything. The aforementioned it's, legend it's just going to happen. So. I'm just gonna... Yeah, I'm going to draw this card now. And it's all clear, as it should be. So there's a symbol on the bottom of this card, you'll see, that kind of little yep. X down there. So that corresponds to... Uh, so basically, if the top card of the tension deck discard pile has a symbol and there's an enemy doing a reaction, if that symbol, if they have a matching symbol as that on their card, they'll do the special effect, they'll do the special attack instead. So it gives them more, ver it gives them like a limited AI. Got it. So normal zombies won't really care about that symbol, but the hunter and the crimson head both do. So they would actually have a special type of attack that happens when that oh, card is shown. Oh, so you see the, the so, that symbol there, and I can second profile. between yeah. this attack yeah. and here has got yeah, this little got symbol. I got it. So the zombie, which means if oh, the hunter was on the board, crimson dead has right? that exact same symbol. But this is a yeah, different the zombie like a does wagon that. wheel so, symbol. Got it. Yeah, you've got it. So yeah. So basically that's how our enemies have different types of attacks. That is really so, clever. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen that before. And we do cover a lot of co op games. Uh, using the event deck as also an AI trigger um, for how the AI activates. That's pretty cool. But we got a little bit of an advance notice too, because you do this after the AI activates. So you actually yeah, so it's going to be, see what to be relevant. It's a tell for your next turn. Nice. Yeah, it's a tell for what it is because that way you get some degree of reacting to it. Because players kind of look at this and go, oh, okay, I need to make sure I'm further away from the zombie because its next attack is going to you know, barf on me or something. It's got extra range, so I need to stay away, that sort of stuff. It's We find it's a really nice and quiet... I don't say forgiving because it's too um, yeah it's too easy, but it's it's more unforgiving than oh I've drawn this card and now the enemies could do much more attack than you know much more damage than I anticipated to me. That's not very fair. We want players to have a head cut. We want people to be forecast to this because that way players can kind of play around yep. it. Um, so yeah. Anyway, that's my turn over. So over to you. So I don't know if you want to oh, explore through that door we, or we you know want to come down the bottom. <laughs> bear, bear, bear. Okay, Gu cool. guns blazing, going through the door. He is a legend. Uh, you are playing him in the true spirit of how Barry is, so I'm uh, I'm very appreciative of that. So uh, we draw card two. Uh, I'm going to flip card oh, two over. So we know and that, that shows us because when we look at this, there's a little two uh, on you, the door. Yeah. I got it. Perfect. Yep, that's correct. Yep. So we flip over card yep. two, and that shows us what this uh, next room is. So I'm going to quickly go grab that and while you uh, while you have a look in there, which. Yep. So that's an item A. Oh, an item A. Okay. I was like, which zombie is that? <laughs> like, no. Uh, no. 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 Oh, don't worry. We'll uh, we'll get onto what zombie might be waiting for you in this room in a moment. So uh, first of all, I'm going to put this down and forgive me. This is uh, one of the slightly more ta clunky parts of tabletopia. Trying to get these yes, things in no, place. I, I agree. So that's good. Does L lock them here? Much as well? much easier in real life. Yeah, I've just locked it on oh, there first, so I we shouldn't be able to grab cool. that tile and move it around yep. anywhere. Cool. No worries. Uh, and then we said there's an item A uh, sitting around in this corner here. Should I go drop down? Yep. And then the other thing that's in this tile is one of these tokens. Uh, it's in the top corner, this uh, single card that. option. Now, these tiles, when we go onto them, aren't empty. They may have enemies on them, they may not, we don't know. The type of uh, symbol on this dictates how many cards you draw from the encounter deck to see if anything is waiting for you. Some of the encounter cards show zombies, some of them show they're empty, some of them have a special rule. So we're going to find out now, because you've just been placed on it, uh, so we discard this now, token. This token so can gone. go anywhere, right? On this whole tile? 
Uh, it's yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. As long as it affects the entire tile, so first time someone's placed on it, you just simply grab the card and uh, and discard it. So we're going to drop this over here, yeah. and uh, the card you need to draw is on this one here. This uh, thing with the umbrella symbol on it. So grab one of those cards and let's see what it says. Two clues empty. It's empty. So yeah, the clues aren't necessarily important. We'll come back to why, how they work in the thing. In the meantime, you just need to see the empty, which is really good. So no enemies on this one. Good times. You know why? They heard me coming. Oh, do you know you've killed them I, already? Preemptively just dead. Yeah, I killed them before I even got there. All right, so I'm going to move two more spaces. So I moved in for one, moved over cool. two more. That's three yep. total. Is it action to pick up an item? I can't remember. Yep. It is indeed. Right, yep. So action to pick up an item. My, my last action. Yep, and uh, grab a blue card. Flamethrower, flamethrower, flamethrower. More ammo. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. So, um, amazing. So you are literally to tooled up. So, yeah, so with these, uh, you can spend an action at any one point to use an item and then you discard it, unless obviously it's a weapon, in which case you hang on to it. So both of those handgun bullets let you reload eight bullets when you need to. Obviously, your max is 15, so you're a bit way off. From oh, yeah, no, no, shot. but I'm going to start using them more. Oh, what just happened? How did I go down? That was weird. Uh, I think you dropped it down. I don't know how I did that without zooming in, but yeah, I'm back to nine. We're good. Uh, I just literally tried to fix it and then broke it again. One second. Oh, look at there you. Fixed. All right. Cool. Uh, so that's it. And there's no reactions again because in the zombie infested mansion, Barry is happening to it. So uh, in which case you just need to draw a card from the tension yep. deck. Barry doesn't feel tension. Uh-oh, it's red. <laughs> 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 amazing timing uh yes so i am going to draw an encounter card it looks like on the bottom here and again great flavor text oh and it's another one of those x's now it, it's just color coded with the card i guess so it's the exact same symbol so yeah, it cool. doesn't do anything different it's just yep. based on the card color this being a red card it's yep. why that symbol's red that's All correct right. So the encounter card is, uh, yeah, is this this one here. Let's see what you got. I mean, we know what we got. A zombie. Ah, oh, zombie. Okay, cool. So the zombie will appear in the closest uh, biohazard symbol that doesn't have uh, you in it. So that will land on here. So basically a zombie just smash through the window to come and get you. Um, good times. Well, Hold on. Not for you, maybe for the zombie. We got we oh. to gotta face him with my gun. And he's going to try to face me, but... We, we know how this story ends. We, we've seen what happened yeah. to his friends. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, cool. Uh, so that's uh, that's that. Yep. My turn. So I'm going to go to here. I'm going to open this door for two. I'm going to step through for three. Uh, and that's card three. So I'm going to quickly go grab okay, card again, three. Again, as a reminder, you look over here. You can see the door. It shows three. We got it. Sweet. Yep. And then uh, I'm going to grab this. Now that is uh, best if I just quickly switch it around a bit. Sorry. There we are. So it looks. No, no, it's okay. I'm just moving it around so we can see what it looks like. So it looks like that. So uh, I'm going to quickly grab this and set it up. So it'll take a couple of minutes to do. Oh, so of, this uh, card chunk, fooled us chunk, here box. into thinking that it was just a little roundabout. Mm. But oh no. Oh no. Yeah, there's a lot laying off over here. So, I'll grab some of these, and you can really immediately see this is a slightly more dangerous uh, tile with all of these uh, bad spawns. Like, for example, you've seen a uh, one of the yellow spawns one card. Uh, this one's got uh, two ambers and a red, which is not so good. But it also does come with a whole bunch of different items, which is encouraging. I mean, Barry doesn't need items. Barry's got bullets. Except for the, except, except, I was about to say, except for the handgun <laughs> bullet she just picked up. Very good. Cool. Uh, we got another uh, door I over think here, that's... right? Uh, oh, there is one up there. Yep, good spot. Perfect. Okay, that's uh, that's that all set up. Uh, I've done all the other bits. Wait, and pieces, this one's so... got a triple card. I'll leave that in there. it too. This room. Uh, yeah, oh, that's the red one it. in I'm the top. I'm sorry. I really kind of fell yeah, off the okay, board. No worries. There you go. Cool. Now I see it. Cool. So, yeah, perfect. So because I've just entered into this amber one that has two cards, I've got to draw two cards. 
not the best. So first one, let's have a quick look, see what we've got. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> we're both doing it. Uh, so that's Two a corpse, corpses. I think. Two corpses, okay. So there's going to be a couple of bodies laying in front of this door. Not always the uh, most inspiring thing to see, and I'm not sure. I definitely don't want. Sure, I don't want Who to go through that. Who designed this game that they put uh, the corpses in front of the door and the spawn in front of the door? Come on now. Wait, that's the wrong card. Don't you have two? You... Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Good point. Remember how we said when on, we catch the designer doing yeah. something, everybody's got to take a sip there of drink go. at home. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, so, huh. Locate the closest tile that contains an enemy and one or more closed doors. Open all unlocked doors on the tile. Uh, we Wait, don't have that, don't so I'm going to put that into the skull pot and draw another. Uh, but it's... Oh, wait a minute. Interesting. Uh, it does. Uh, yeah, an enemy and one or more closed doors. Oh, no, that right. door's open. So, so I'm just going to quickly drop it over here. So I already drew the wrong cards, so uh, so I think you... Right, uh, we're even again. I think we're, we're good there. Yeah. Let's flip it over. And the other one is a zombie. Yep, zombie. One zombie. So it looks like that zombie. Exactly. See, yeah. singing again. You did promise me this. You, you have I not mean, disappointed. I, the only person I try to disappoint is my wife. It's fine. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so that zombie is going to be sitting there, and that explains why there's two corpses there because that zombie, other than breakdancing, is, uh, is currently. <laughs> I, him up. I can't do it. Uh, Q is your friend. I, I thought I did Q. Unless he's not behaving. Oh, is he not behaving? All right, I'll grab a replacement zombie. If you uh, if you discard the drunk zombie in the corner, I'll uh, <laughs> I'll grab a replacement fun. one and we'll go from there. Here, let's see if we can. Let's drop you down here, buddy. Oh, yeah. Nope. Oh, it's the top. Okay, there I'll tidy up the tokens there we go. and then we'll uh, have we'll a We'll just have him in the corner of the room. Oh, okay. He's, we we know where he is. Perfect. Yeah, and, and more importantly, he's just sitting there chowing on the uh, corpses. So that was, uh, where did I go? I went open the door for one, I stepped through for... No, sorry, I moved into that square, didn't I? So it's one, two, three, I've got one action left. Mm -hmm. Pull a berry. I'm going to move into the middle of that... I'm going to move over there, okay. I think. There is a logic right. to this. So now it's reaction phase. Uh, this zombie is going to move yep. over to here. It's going to get bored of eating the corpses. Now, because this door and this door is open, that means the zombie is going to move towards yeah. you as well. Over to there. Uh, and then we have a... I'll just quickly double check. The top card of the thing had the... Yeah, it didn't have the one. That means there's quite a special attack. And then I'm going to draw the tension card that I tried to draw before, and uh, you quite rightly uh, stopped me from doing. We're so good. Quick look. It's all clear. Oh, now, wait a minute. Okay. Oh, they oh, weren't you, supposed sir. to do special actions because they had a different oh. symbol. Right. I'm going to do some... Yeah, that's correct. So, oh, what you could... Go on. No, no, I was going to say, what you could do here is just... That's what I was going to do. I said I'm going to do a very unberry like move. One, two, three, four. There you go, see? I'm, You're a pro. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, even Barry learns his lessons every once in a while. Now, if that zombie opens <laughs> so this because, door, it's going to be so bad news for the zombie. I'll tell you that right now. I, I, Barry only lets zombies live once, uh -oh. not not more than once. <laughs> nice. Okay, well, in the meantime, uh, I'm going to get bitten by the other zombie because that's going to perform a reaction because it's yep. linked to your tile. So it's going to try and bite me. So I'm going to make an evade roll, um, and I've passed because I got any of these arrows. So just talking for evade roll, so I don't think we've necessarily yep. done too much of that. Um, evade each character has an evade score. Uh, that's on their card. It's the first icon. Uh, everybody generally has two as an average. Uh, Barry's only got one because he's not really about no, evading stuff. No, no, he's not. Um, and when you make an evade <laughs> roll, no, not so much. Just killing. Uh, and then when you roll uh, your dice, you're looking for any one of these arrow symbols. So obviously there's uh, the small evade there and then the two large yeah. evades. Uh, we've already seen it a couple of times. It's the medium evade that has the sort of yep. dotted line on it. Uh, those ones basically um, depend on the number of enemies in your square and also the size of your uh, the enemy's base. You might need to roll higher evade than just the basic one. But either way, the single zombie on its own isn't too much problem, so it's all good. Uh, last thing you need to do is draw a card for attention deck. Okay, so I do. Before we get there, um, we had a note from uh, China yeah, sure. in the thing because uh, somebody was asking yep. about playing on Tabletopia, and uh, she says it, it's on Tabletopia now. There's a link on the campaign page, so mm -hmm. go ahead and actually, I will That's link correct. that also in the um, in the show notes here. Not right now, but after we're done here, I will link it uh, here as well. So if people want to see uh, or get to the Tabletopia version and play it themselves, they're more than welcome to. 
Cool. All right, so we are two zombies moved, attacked. Uh, so we're drawing this card, right? Attention card. Wait, it's my turn. That's right. That's it. It's all clear. It is, yeah, I just I just got bit because of that. Uh, but we have a symbol. Is, is that the dangerous zombie, zombie one? one? It is. So, so the zombie uh, in its next turn, in well, in in uh, it's my turn now. Zombies will have a range of yep. uh, one, and they have and they st- so rather than zero. And after they've made the attack, they get moved into my square into the square that follow they're up. attacking. So they basically yep. get a death lunch. They follow up. Uh, so Chris is going to celebrate that fact by shooting the zombie. <laughs> oh, right am in I? the face. I don't really have much ammo though, so can I'm a bit I concerned about that. I'm gonna try and stuff, dodge. Or no? Uh, you absolutely can. It costs an action if you're in adjacent or the same square. But I'm also conscious. I'm I'm generally okay at dodging, whereas you're not so much. So you having more ammo okay. is generally better, uh, because you kind of need to gun things down as more of an option. So I'm gonna try and dodge past this zombie, and I'm gonna succeed because I rolled the small of eight. So all you need is, is one needed. out of the two. So Chris. Yeah, one out of the uh, yeah uh, possible ones. So I'm going to jump over to there. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is hmm, I'm going to spend a fuel token to burn those two corpses because that's too much of an opportunity to to pass up when there's yep. two in one square. So I'm just going to grab that. Got him. I'm so used to tabletop. Then they are both gone. Which is cool. <laughs> yeah. So I'll just grab that and move it out of the way. So that is, uh, what's that, one, two to do that. Uh, three, I'm going to, I'm actually going to leave that item okay. for you, I think. Um, so three to open the door. And then four to step through, which might be somewhat wow. suicidal. We're going to find just, out. You're, you're in for it. You're I in know, for, right? In for a penny, in for a pound. I thought uh, I, thought I was got uh, the crazy one here. I thought Barry was the, uh, the insane one. But no, you're just like, you know what? I'm going in. Chris is in the zone. Yeah, I've got no actions to react to anything, but I'm going to do my best. So let's have a quick look at what we got. So our first one is one Why zombie. Why wouldn't we so, spawn uh, another zombie here? Yeah. Right next to you. Nice. Boink. Yeah, exactly. Well, he's got to go around the corner to get me first, so hopefully it's not going to be too bad. And then let's see what's over here. Immediately draw attention. Uh, an ominous feeling. Yeah, an ominous feeling settles over me. Uh, so I'll draw attention card. I'll just put that back in the... Uh, the pile over here. I'm. Um, this is the tension. This is the deck I generally tend to build because we'll refresh that one every run out. So let's have a look. See what we got. I could do a one zombie. It's not be that bad. Uh, it's all clear, other than you know the zombie coming towards me. That's also helpful. We got rid of that uh, special attack, which is quite nice as well. So uh, the zombie reaction phase. This one's going to go to here. This one's going to go to here. Um, then I'm going to draw a card from tension deck. All right. All clear, with no special it's all attacks. all clear. All the good cards. Yeah, no special attacks. So all the good cards are generally coming up, which is nice. But I'm also very aware that Chris is kind of surrounded by well, zombies not for at this long. point. Barry's coming. One, oh, two. I see. So Barry literally just steps one, out. One, two, right through this door, right? Line of sight. Oh, glorious. Yeah, you've right, got no I'm problems there. I'm shooting with three. We're not, we're not taking any chances on this one. Nice. I got I got a new clip of ammo. I'm feeling uh I'm feeling lucky with this. Boom! I got this, which is it, right? Uh, you did. So yeah, that's it. So you've got and one I damage and a push as well. So here. that zombie. We'll put the corpse not not in yeah, front of the perfect. door, See? please. <laughs> yep, you've not got it. Not in front it. of either of the right doors. Right there. So that's dead. Now, this zombie hears the sound and we'll walk into. Uh, I'm going to say this and probably let, let what I think has happened. Basically, this zombie hears it and walks into line yep. of sight. It's the way of <laughs> yes. saying that, I suspect. I, I, I hear you. I hear you. I hear your <laughs> message loud and clear. Guess what? Barry's still got ammo, so that means Barry's still shooting. <laughs> Three more. Boom, boom, boom. Amazing. Let's do this. Barry with the blast. And oh, you, look at that. A double and push. And he's going well. right over here with this other zombie. zombie. He's going with his friend's corpse. We're, we're just wow. having a, a, a corpse fiesta over here. It's a corpse party. Yeah. Yeah, that's, um, I'm that's pretty grim. I mean, Barry, you I, I mean, scary. Yeah, hey, I didn't shoot you, <laughs> right? Um, the, no, and it's and I like the way that the person who's been walking around bur- burning bodies is telling you right, you're scary. Right. So, now, um, it's an action for me to use the <laughs> ammo? It is. So you've moved twice and you've done that. So I think that's. Uh, you moved twice or I you moved, moved once? I moved twice because I was right in front of this door. So one, two, 
and then I shot twice. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So, uh, in which case you've no reactions because guess what? They're all this dead. guy is, doesn't we, know you're here anymore. He's we, lost interest. We know what happens when Barry enters a room. <laughs> they're all dead. Yeah, exactly. And it's all clear because uh, you scared so them all we as well. All clear. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you on that one. Okay, uh, I'm going to go into this. So it's uh, that's yep. your turn now. Oh no, sorry, it's my turn. It's yep. turn your thing. So I'm going to go over to here. Uh, I'm going to pick up this item, this item B, and drop it over here. Let's have a look. See what we got. Oh, an old key. Uh, it's a small key. It's an old key. So if we find the door that's locked by the old key, then we can use it. So just quickly zip down here and use this. Go. Uh, right, so what do we think? Do we want to go north, or do we want to go back around and then back into the room and go out through there? Which way um, do you want to go? I mean, that room's a little scary over there. Uh, yeah, so yeah, you think we should duck out and go the other way? See if we can't start heading back uh, through this one-way door. Okay. I mean, I'm sure it's the wrong call, but we'll see. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, so I've gone this way. Uh, that's the end of my phase. Uh, we have no reactions, because again, Very. Barry... Um, that's just all we need to say there. Just, just because Barry. <laughs> because of Barry. I think that needs to go <laughs> into guy. campaign. Because Barry. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think you need to worry about that. The fans love Barry for that exact reason. Uh, reanimate. Uh, dead eyes flicker open to reveal milky orbs as the closest corpse rises undeadly uh, to its feet. Remove the closest corpse and replace it with a zombie. These guys uh, ever what learn... this card should probably be called. No, I was about to say what this card should probably be called is target practice. But, um, you yeah, know, let's see. Uh, so that's your turn now? Yep. One, two. And we're going to bury him. <laughs> it's the position of uh, how Barry is standing. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, no. I don't think it could you know be what? any better. I'm feeling lucky on this one. I'm only going to use two bullets. Oh, that's right. Okay. I'm feeling lucky. I got this. Bar Bar Barry's getting cocky. Boom. For good reason. Because Barry's the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. That zombie just stands up and Barry yeah. just blasts it back down to the ground again. Uh, but wow. but uh, I am going to reload. That, that is exactly what I'm doing with my <laughs> last action here. Um, because how am I supposed to kill without bullets? Right. That's a very good point. A knife is not a good way to take down no. a zombie. No. Although, life lesson. <laughs> life lesson. Yeah, don't get that close to a zombie. <laughs> Oh, because it doesn't have rapid fire, <laughs> okay, cool. right? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a a interesting uh, twist you put in yeah, there. Yeah, and you. Yeah, and it's also something where you can't use your uh, large evade symbol either, right? Because that's not that's um, not what that's Barry only on handguns. So that's not Barry's no. life. He's he, he why, why would he stab someone with a knife when he could just right. shoot them to death? Um, so that's uh, <laughs> that's those two things. Uh, you do need to draw a card from the texture deck, though. Uh, yeah, Barry's not tense. Barry's not tense at all, except they just saw something happen. It lurched forward. During the next character's reaction phase, all enemies move one extra square. Well, guess what? There are no enemies to move. Although, if you open that door, there might be. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. Uh, so one, two to open this door. Uh, three to step through, and that is door four. Yep, it's over uh, here. So one, uh, sorry, uh, I don't know how you four, rotate. Do you know how to rotate in the zoomed-in view on Tabletopia? That's... Another, th uh, in the zoomed in view, not so much. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. I think you, you I think you have to step away from it and do it. But anyway, uh, I know how this room works. So I'm gonna quickly drop this down. Uh, while you want to, I don't know if you want to check the chat or whatever, because it'll take me a couple yep. minutes just to quickly sort these things out. Um, yeah, no, I mean, except for cheering for their favorite characters. Uh, let's see. Yeah, everybody's doing, everybody's doing good. good. We got a lot of people out there. So just a reminder that after we're done playing today, we are going to be doing a, a Q and A at the end, just a short one, um, for any questions you might have. You know, when you got the designer right here and now, um, and the question cannot be, can we superpower Barry again? Um, Barry is already superpowered, as you know, <laughs> when in the right hands, when in the hands of a master. He's Barry. Barry is uh. Is, is already uh, a killing machine. 
there's there's something which I really enjoy about the uh, the modesty I mean, of that. Yes, um, well, <laughs> as, as you pointed out, uh, you said this is the most British campaign somebody had ever seen. Apparently, this is going to be the most American stream anybody has ever seen with the, my, my lack of modesty. <laughs> <laughs> I find your lack of modesty disturbing. Amazing. Um, <laughs> okay. On the good news is we found the oh. uh, we found the door that has that key. Wait, what? Simple lock. So wait, hold on. Where's the card? So, Let me. Uh... Uh, cards in oh. my inventory down by my character. Ah, oh, sorry. No, no, sorry. Were you looking for the, for the uh, key? For... Or were you looking for the this uh... room? Is this it? Yep. Uh, so you'd spin it a this little way? bit more. Okay. But that's pretty much it. it. So we know that that key is there because of this symbol. This. Uh... Uh, it's got it. If you see the door is blue, and then down the bottom it says old ah, key uh, on the actual Nice. Thing. Oh, that's the door that requires the old key. I get it. I get it. You've got it. So, man, should just make a uh, token drop through the world. Oh no, no, so, no! I see the token. It's a quirky online. tabletopia thing there. It's right here. Oh, okay, fair enough. In which case, I'll, I'll leave it there. Yeah, it's dropped through on mine, but as long as you can see it on yours, that's oh, the these more are all one. Zombies. So I'll leave that there. Uh, there's a couple. Yeah, there's some corpses here. And when I say corpses, I mean, I mean ones that've got I mean, up they're, around they're, a bit. They're um, very, very corpses. <laughs> well. <laughs> not just yet but i fear they will be for the corpse's sake uh so that's um i think that's everything now dum 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 uh one other thing we have Ooh. a narrative token so if one of us goes in this square here uh and i don't know no, if that token just dropped through the path for you as well but cool just about. Uh, i do just about here you go, halfway so on. that token there if you uh i suit you as long yep. as you can see it on yours again, it doesn't matter. I know it's there. So um, if either of us step into that square, okay. we'll start a narrative event. I.e. like if you were playing nice. the video game, it'd be a cutscene. So um, that's an interesting one for us to play around with. So I'm going to drop this off here. So it looks like we've got, going forward here, uh, was I? I went one, two, uh, three to step through. So I've got one turn, I've got one action left. Now I've earned one thing in my time, and that is leave this sort of stuff to Barry. <laughs> So I'm going to um, I'm going to move forward tentatively. The reaction Nothing phase, on the this one is going to get closer. Last card, so they're going to do their normal are. stuff. All right. So one thing I'd like to point out, yep. because when I looked at this, I'll be honest, I was like, "Oh man, that's a really small area," and they're they're hinting at what's ahead. So I, I was a little disappointed by that. But mm. after opening up, I see that it doesn't look anything like what it looked like here. So that's actually a really mm. kind of cool yeah. um, surprise for me because I thought it was just going to look like exactly you mm. know the layout that it was. But you're also giving people mm. a little bit of advance notice, like this is how much table space you're going to need. So maybe this is where you want to clear some table space and leave some table space. So I think it's a nice uh, a, a nice way you okay. did that there. Cool. Well, thank you. I'll pass that on to the graphic designers. Um, so we have drawn the sounds outside card. Uh, so uh, if this character leaves their current tile during their next turn, they must draw two extra cards in the next tension phase. So I'm going to have to be very careful because Chris has obviously kindly gone to here. Here's a whole bunch of sounds outside from through the doors and so on, and is now scared a little so, bit. So I'm just going to drop that's this over yours, here. That's right? so not time you this go. Tile. So I assume your tile includes yeah. all the things that are actually attached to the tile, right? Not just the room you're in. Uh, no, just the just the main tile itself. So this cross hatched okay, so flooring area it, here. Even though it's one tile, so I can't really leave this. It's still considered leaving that tile. Yep. So it's basically leaving the room or corridor or whatever. That's you're correct. In. Yeah, exactly. I can hear sounds from like you know rattling on the other side of the doors or whatever else. I'm not going anywhere. Now this is obviously very bad when there's a zombie breathing oh, down your neck, yeah. but I'm also not that worried no, no, because no. apparently Mary's Superman is here. This one, and I'm going to roll three dice this time. Uh, so I moved two and I'm shooting. The reason I'm you tried that well, two dice. Well, I want to blow him past care. you. That's my goal: is to literally move him so ah. far that even if he's alive, he does he won't want to be. He'll, he'll regret all his <laughs> undead decisions that he's made. Um, all right, so 
It is a double push. Well, that's so... a double push. So you yeah. could push him towards you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. you really Game are. Time. Game time, fellas. <laughs> well. Um. All right. Okay. So I do have one more action. Barry's Barry's mm. gonna shoot again, but he's now that he's so close. I only need two two shots. This time. Barry knows. I see. Ba- well, Barry just knows. You you are, you are definitely playing in. this like he's Barry. Got this. By the way. It's it's, he's got it's this. spot on. I'm sure the no, chat. I'm Barry sure the chat will this. tell you. Uh, he hasn't got this so much. Okay, <laughs> Barry didn't have this. So unfortunately, you've not hit anything. So the zombie will make a reaction, and it's going to walk back into the same square. This is as me. the dodgiest zombie um, ever. And now it's it's very nimble. <laughs> nice. It's Neo, Neo zombie. And uh, now uh, I need to make an evade because in the reaction phase, it's going to so try and one, me. One green man did have a comment I wanted to say. Any chance of fixing those tokens was enjoying little demo until everything started falling through the board. I will say, just playing on these things before, that's not you guys, right? (laughs) Like, that is is a tabletopia thing. Mm. Um, Yeah, unfortunately, I'd love to. Uh, It's an annoying tabletopia thing. Uh, The best thing you can do is you can... um, I found putting the tokens that generally tend to be on the corner of uh, tiles helps. The other one is you can, if you really want to get it, start unlinking tiles and stuff, but that gets quite messy uh, when you're trying to play around with the code during mid-game. So uh, often, the best times it's easiest to proxy with something. Cool. Um, and and uh, last there. question from James. Could Resident Evil 2 or 3 board game characters work in this game if they're given a kerosene uh, amount? Right. Uh, 100%, yes. So if you want to take your UBCS commandos and see how they do it in the Spencer Mansion, go nuts. If you want to see how your stars members fight their way through Raccoon City in RE3, and I mean, that's something you can do that, that as well. I mean, I don't know, you know, given you guys the time frame or whatever, but I mean, I'm sure that's something they could put up on the website if you wanted to give them kerosene to make that um, more transferable between, or, you know, you can just house roll it and figure it out for yourself. Yeah, it's... Yeah, exactly. It's something where we've always been very careful. Like Capcom usually ask us to very specifically stick to the original games, uh, so yep. we don't get outside of that too much. But with that in mind, we know that our audience is going to want to play those other characters in this. So we've always made them so make sure things are backwards and forwards yes. compatible. And as I best will we can. say we're working with Capcom as well. And even though we have things in the same box, they want them separated. So I get it. <laughs> so we're making a uh, a licensed yeah. game coming up soon. So totally get it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so I have spectacularly failed uh, to make my uh, my evade roll there. So for the first I'm actually going to take some damage. For the first um, time in forever. Yeah, so Chris. Yep, that's exactly what it was. And the singing <laughs> is not disappointing, sir. So I'm going to drop down one level, uh, which is uh, sad for Chris. But I'm going to get to push the zombie away. And Toward I'm going to push Barry. the zombie away <laughs> that way towards you. And you Bar- towards Barry's going to hit him eventually. He's locked in. He's uh, and that. then... Right, and then you get to take a card yep. from the tension so you, right? Oh no, was that my turn? Oh no, it's, this was my uh, turn. No, it's your turn. That's right. Turn. No, no, no. You it's just shooting away. Right. Cool. Right, Chris. Uh, I have the small key. Go Should for I it. leave you to no, deal no, that no, zombie, no. or drop me to shoot him concerned. a little bit first? Yeah, run away. So one, two, three, and then I'm going to open this door. So it's not going to spawn any uh, enemies just yet. Quickly grab this and I'll drop it out of the way because that's now going to be unlocked. Um, but yeah, I obviously can't leave this tile anyway, so because that's bad. I got it. So I've just it's lost open. that door, but I'm, if it's the same yeah. as before, you can see it, so you can flip it over. See, here's Good the times. key. You want to make like the, the tokens you can work it, so. and things like that in a game you're playing um, with your friends. Just make sure you actually are playing with your friends because one one of you might be able to see it. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, so this zombie is going to stagger closer uh, to you because you're the closest character in the reaction phase. We're then going to grab this and my one card. Nothing. Is, it is not the symbol clear. for our zombies. Uh, we've got a symbol. No, we're all good. Cool. I mean, okay. We, uh, over we, to you, we Barry. Coming here. Do your Barry thing. Now Barry takes on. it out for dinner. You know what? Um, Barry is pissed at this zombie. Happy. Barry doesn't like what this zombie's been doing. So Barry might take a swipe with his knife. Just, just Ooh, one. I see. I just one. Going. Just a single swipe. And let's see what happens here. Oh, it should have been his gun. Oh well. 
Ah, oh, so unfortunately, the the zombie looks at the knife sticking out of its chest, gets very confused as to why, and then basically decides to some, uh, now stumble that, close. that much closer to you. Yeah. So it's you're got... now in the same. Yeah. So you're now in the same square as the zombie. So if you want to no, move past time. it like a Vader or anything, then you'll need to make a Vader roll. But yeah, <laughs> I kind of guessed as much. Boom. And pushed. <laughs> so Barry is just waiting for this zombie to come <laughs> in this room so he can uh, make a pile. Add to, add to his pile of corpses every <laughs> This is the wow. So basically, Barry is um yeah. We, we call this the Barry pile done there, Barry. in uh, in my uh, world. So you get <laughs> yeah. Barry... <laughs> yes. I so am. you're in the same square as an item, by the way, which would have picked up yep. any given time. I like the way you're. Oh, not I don't yet. This thing, not until they're all dead. Oh, it's a lighter. Oh, guess what's gonna happen now? <laughs> <laughs> Barry <laughs> pile be better. done. <laughs> Burned. Wow, I, I'm not. I don't, yeah, I, I hesitate to say it, but this is pro level plays. <laughs> so um, very pile well burned <laughs> from one fuel. Yeah, that's. I've never. I've not seen anyone do three. All right, well so done. achievement I'm unlocked. Very impressive. Something new for the Kickstarter. That's a free. berry lighter. Yeah. <laughs> or a berry pile, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was. Pretty, yeah, that was. Pretty, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Berry bonfire. Okay, well done. so we've really, done, really well done a knife. Cool. We've done a shoot, we've done a pickup, and we've done a berry pile. So that's that's it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Because uh, so there ain't nobody in sight again. <laughs> it's all clear. It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is. Yes. Other than a whole bunch of smoke. Uh, cool. All right. With my turn, I'm going to go through. Uh, this is the last exploration card. So I'm going to start dropping these ones out here because I. Uh, yep. Is it just going to get in the way now? So let's step through. I'm going to grab this card. Oh, you did see it. Here okay, for a good. moment, just to drop it out of the way. Uh, it was just I had the edge of it there, just just poking out. Where are we? One of these. Flip you over, and it is. I'll let you. Uh, oh, you oh, you look at it while I take care of this. A hunter in there. Yeah, I was about so to say, Barry's got new things to shoot now. at. So. I mean, that makes Barry very happy. <laughs> Barry has no fear and whatsoever when, about this. This like and when Barry green starts talking about himself machine. in the third person, you know it's game time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's like it's Barry also right. you know related to the Rock uh, that no one actually knew. Yeah, do, can if you, you can smell what Barry is cooking, <laughs> literally, it's <laughs> all right. I got token C for you. Well, hold uh, on. So the hunts be here and here. Uh, actually, here and here. Oh, because I every time I zoom, it messes up. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm I'm oh, so worries. used to tabletop simulator worries. and this, but, um, I, I, yeah. I'm not even gonna. It is what it is. I just <laughs> yeah. Now, any chance cool. of porting this over? I, I assume not with four days in the campaign to tabletop simulator. I, I assume that ship sailed. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, so I mean, it's one of those ones where we're very careful with our demos because we there's a degree of control gotcha. we have over this um, that Capcom like yeah. us having as well. Um, so Got it. this is why we go with this one. Um, cool. So having just walked in the room and seen this, I'm not sure I'm really best suited to deal so with it, but can try. And evasive. Uh, the downside which doesn't sound good. If this enemy is hit yeah. by an attack, roll blue dice. If the result is a big evade, the hunter doesn't suffer the effect of the attack and moves one square toward the closest character. And it moves too. Um, you know, I don't know that Barry is feeling too good about fighting a hunter. I gotta be honest. No, and also it's got because the top card of that tension deck, it's matched its special attack. It's got a very beefy, powerful Three, attack, special attack to worry about as well. Space. If it's two away, which it is right now, so yeah. um, you could always close the door. <laughs> Uh, I could. Now, let me uh, ask you, are these off. item decks I'm limited tempted. to the number of items that pop up in this mission? So, for example, um, is there only one more green card? They are. Yes. Uh, in this particular demo, yes, there is. Um, ordinarily, of course, you have different types of well, decks but, and all so sorts. So then but how do you yes, guarantee absolutely. that we're going to get the... I mean, I'm assuming, because that's the big boss, that that is also where the sword key is. So how do you guarantee in a normal game yeah, that absolutely. you are going to get that sword key? So the item A deck is never structured. That one is just a rolling deck, and that will never have anything that's okay. scenario-specific in it. So you don't need Got to it. find that separate key you need. Um, 
Uh, the item C deck, by comparison, is structured exact opposite. So item C deck will always have the item you need whenever you're there because it's a structured deck. The way that you stack things onto it means that you never run out of a point of going, I can't open these doors because I, you know, I haven't found the right item or not. Uh, item Bs generally tend to be a combination of the two. Sometimes there'll be something where it's just grab the certain amount of item Bs and shuffle them in. Other times it is put this nice. card in the top right, X so amount of cards. Okay, from there. So a couple of uh, comments. James He's says quite. that's really cool. He was referring to being able to bring sure. your Resident 2 and Re Resident Evil evil three characters into this game he thinks that's really cool uh william robertson says no more community decisions left to make how many more choices do we uh do advanced characters before the kickstarter campaign ends Ooh. are you gonna spoil that for us oh <laughs> there is a question oh there is a question well there's at least i mean they're currently voting on one i mean i haven't seen this but they must be by now I'm voting on one of them so they've definitely got at okay. least two nice Got it. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, also, just for just for your reference, um, yeah, just for just for your reference, if you're out there, there we're almost at the point we're going to see a return of the oh, milestone nice. goals. So, as well. got a question. There's more stuff for going line on of sight. Well. If I'm in this space here, could I see Shit. this space here where he is? So it's middle space to middle space. Is that how it works? Yep. Yeah. yeah, you're so uh, yeah middle of the square to the middle of the square. Probably so, line of sight. Yeah, although I don't think you're going to need to worry because there's going to be a whole bunch of screaming and, and shouting and blood and what? violence before then. Uh, so oh, Chris is going to start shooting nice. at, that, at that hunter. Oh, yeah, I've still got two actions. Uh, now, I may not be as good at this as you are, but we're going to see what happens. I don't no, know. that's a push and a, and a damage. But let's first, before, yeah, before we go any further, evade, we get too excited. No. See nice. if it evades it. So how we mark damage? No, good. Tremendous. So Hunter's going to oh, uh, put Wound Token on his top. So Hunter has taken one damage, uh, and I'm going to blast it back into this corner. Uh, so I walk through. I've made one attack. I'm then going to make a beeline, I think, for the items. So I'm going to get over to here. All right, so did you that. take away your three ammo? Uh, so reaction phase. Okay. Uh, I did. I, I haven't been shooting very yeah, much. Well, I've been uh, yeah. leaving that mostly to you. I'm a little uh, so I'm low now on ammo, time. and I'm pretty far here. So I'm now... Yeah. So, so uh, now reaction phase. Now, unfortunately, because that card's up, uh, the hunter is going to do a special attack. Regardless of whether it hits me, it's going to be in my yep. square, uh, because of that assault rule, which is not so good. Uh, so but now it is something where I have to make my aid roll. Now, three damage. It is. Now, because... Yep. So, so yeah. So because... It's on a base that's twice as large as the other ones. I can't roll the small evade, eye, that small arrow we see there. I have to roll ah, a medium okay. or large to evade this. Of course. It counts as two models for the purposes of, of evades. And... Oh, that's going to... So that's the difference between small, so, medium, and large evade. Uh, Chris is not Smalls enjoying that. Smalls evade You've got one it. model. Yeah. Mediums will evade up to two or so, a medium-sized model. And larges will evade everything yeah. up to the biggest. You've and got what it. would that be, three or four? Three enemies. A large will work whatever you roll. No matter how many enemies are surrounding you, now, you roll a large evade, you uh, always succeed. Now, is capacity limit to each of these um, squares? Uh, four. So you could have four small base models, uh, two small base models, and one medium, or two mediums, or one large. I assume that means that, um, for example, if they're a range zero character and the square is full, they could probably attack from one away, right? So that they can always get their attacks off? Oh, okay. Uh, so they can't, but so, so they can't, but, but but enemies have a rule whereby, um, so if you're surrounded by lots of enemies, only one enemy will attack, but it will make the evasion much much more difficult because you're surrounded by other enemies. Uh, models with larger bases will always have at least range one, so that way they can never get to the situation That's where awesome. they can't attack you. Um, so the good news is I have this defense item, this dagger. So rather than taking three damage, which would put me on danger from that hunter. Uh, I'm going to be making using my dagger to prevent avoid that damage. I do, however, need to roll this dice here and see whether I keep my dagger, which I do not. So, now, sadly, so how would you get to keep it? Because I don't see any special, my special rules, rules here by keeping it. Uh, if you look on my ah. on my Chris Redfield's card, same way your uh, your ones are. I have Survivor. After Chris uses a defense item, you roll the blue dice. If the result is large, nice. uh, you get to return the right, So you mentioned. avoided all three of that damage. Which feels I did avoid all three of that damage. Unfortunately, the hunter is still going to be in my square. 
but that's the that's the attack I was waiting for. So um, cool. Um, said in the nicest way. I'm gonna quickly draw a tension card uh, and then I mean, I'm gonna say, the please come is, save me, Barry. Uh, pretty far. So I'm scared. Uh, well, he said I have to do a special attack in the next turn. Yeah, at least that's pretty something. far. That's the problem. I've run out of dagger. But now. I'm gonna run good. down the hallway while reloading my gun. Ah, uh, he's heard the scre He's heard the screaming and this inhuman like bellow yeah, so from I'm, this monster. I'm loaded up and I'm running down the hall. I'm coming. I'm just not that fast. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, I'll get one okay, shot off next enough. turn, assuming the monster's not out in the hall here. Yeah, okay. Let's uh, let's do that, and let's hope that works out. So, um, tension deck. Oh, no, sorry, reaction. I need to see if I get hit by this thing. That's dumb. Because we don't have any healing items. It's the other problem. Uh, you avoided it. Uh, that's nice. going to be a good large evade. Yep, so no hit, no damage to me. It's good. So if so you tension deck run out, you can just close the door, right? Yeah, that's the plan. If I oh, you don't have the item. item first, Can you pick up the item when he's exactly in your space? Plan. Not yet. Oh. Yeah, I'll just make an evade roll. Worst case scenario, I'm going to have the item at the end of this next turn, but it just how dangerous that bloody. is is going to be an interesting question of what the next tension card is on of it. Yeah, right. Uh, all right, so that was my turn, so I'm going to grab my tension card. All clear. As we do, but that is that is. Uh, symbol, what's that symbol? Unfortunately. Oh, dear. I don't have that anymore. All right, let's try and pick up this. Let's spend three bullets because that's the Shoot safest him. way of doing Boom. this. Boom! Because I'm rolling more one. dice. I'm one trying push. to blast him out of the way. I got one. Let me just drop my bullets down, and then we're going to see whether that actually hits him or not. Nope, it does. That's good. So we pushed him away. So oh, you go to here, Mr. Hunter. That's good. Uh, I'm okay. going to pick up the item for two. And then three, four, I'm going to get to here. So the item I'm I found... I'm guess it's the key card. Is... We'll find out. <laughs> Tra -la -la. See? The it's singing the, it's is the sword contagious. Key. We can get out. <laughs> uh, Always time for it. Always bow, nice. time for a David Bowie. Yes, tra la la. So um, cool. Uh, now we unfortunately have the uh, yeah the horrific assault of the hunter, <laughs> and I've got no other way to describe it as that. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, now I have a question, me, Mr. Hunter. Just because it's silly. If I close this door, Shoot. will he not react I've on evaded. my turn? Yep. <laughs> so I just that's run correct, up and that's and a viable close tactic. you in with the uh, with the hunter. That's that's yeah. not very berry like, yeah. I will say. Yeah. You uh no. Uh, I'm I've done that side of the confrontation nice. deck, and then we are good. I did evade, so it's all good. Nice. Thunder isn't the only thing that can evade. And no more special all attack. Clear, is the and key. no more special attack. So we're all good for the moment. Yeah. So over to you, Barry, you can either ignore me completely nah, and go for that that's, narrative that's event. That's not very um, berry like or you, can... you know what Barry does. Barry has one. Oh, he's single-minded, and you know what? One soul we're, mission. We're, yeah. It's not good enough to push him. We're gonna have to blast him out of the sky right. here. Boom! All right, we got one. Uh, well, that's one damage. So let's oh, no. uh, roll to the base. Oh no, he can. <laughs> quite, quite wrong. Quite wrong. <laughs> I am. <laughs> uh, so he doesn't move because he's already. Yeah, he's. He's already in the same square as me, so he won't evade. Uh, he was ready for you, Barry. He's heard yeah, the gunshots. He saw the pile of the corpses. Stories. He knows. Oh, well, that was unfortunate. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, I was just trying to push him off of you at least, but no, nothing. Is that... Oh, so uh, event it's card. Okay, we'll, or we'll no, get there. he attacks you now. So uh, uh, you I need it. to roll my evade first, uh, which I pass. So it's all good. When Barry, oh, and no special symbol this time. Tremendous. Right, uh, so my turn. I'm going to try and evade no. and get away from this thing, uh, which I fail, so I'm going to take one damage. Chris is feeling a little bit more beaten up. So now, not does the this best. have any effect on gameplay oh, the more I... wounded you get? 
Uh, no, she, she, earlier on, it, uh, one of the things that um, back in the times of RE2 where when a character is severely injured, yep. they actually slow down quite a lot. We originally put this... Uh, we took it out for a couple of reasons. One is no, poor get poor is not. never a fun mechanic. <laughs> um, and then the second one, and the second one is is also a lot of people just simply forgot. And then when oh, oh god, I've forgotten that. Sense. I need to reset or I need to do this or that. Whenever you get a mechanic like that, for the small amount of flavor it added, it wasn't worth the extra um, complexity points. So we kind of just removed it. Um, obviously, one for happy was a house rule, but I think anybody house ruling it will very quickly see. Especially the figure part, exactly yeah. what problem we had with it. So, like every single test group we had, said we just kept forgetting that rule, and it's like, yeah, it's it's not people trying to be gamey. It's just a, well, a difficult yeah, thing to remember. It, so, it, um, it, uh, I mean, it makes it more fun, right? At some point, we have to remember these are games; they're meant to be fun. Now, how did he get pushed yeah. away? Uh, because when he hurts you, uh, you can push oh, away the enemy sweet. that hit you in your square. So that's exactly what happens. So if it hits me, I take one damage, but I do get to shut it away. Uh, then two, I move into the thing. And three, I'm going to lock the door. I can't actually see that door. I'm hoping you can. Oh, so the difference is Barry gets to push everybody away. And normally you just push one away. Yep, yep. I'm flipping the door the over thing. for you. So that's yep. one action to move Amazing. out, two Fantastic. actions to close the door. Yep. And at that point, I am going to... What can I actually do? I don't really have anything to do with that. I don't want to move on to the uh, narrative thing, so I'm going to let you do that. So I'm just going to pause there for a moment. That doesn't, and, that doesn't uh, sound consider my do options. promising. So nothing. <laughs> You're telling me that i got to worry about this narrative a bit? I want you to have the, I want you to have the full experience. Great. It's all clear. Uh, good times. So when you. you go into a mansion with someone who's been there before, and they stop and say, no, you go first. <laughs> that, that, that's never... I feel like that's what just happened here. I feel like you're like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to... I, I, You see that dark alley up ahead? No, no, no. You go first on that one. See, I just killed the zombie moving past him. That's, that's how Barry works. He just moves past stuff and knocks it down. All right, story event time. Okay. So we remove that out of the way. Uh, you're then going to draw a card from this narrative event deck. Now, obviously, we only have one of these cards in this tip of demo, but there's quite a few of them otherwise. Radio static. What do we got? Draw the top card of the mission deck and begin the... Wait, begin the mission? We did this now. Now, so let me let me talk to you a little bit about how this works, and I'm going to grab a couple yep. of the uh, the other cards for us for this. So the way that... One of the things we want the mansion to feel like in yep. Resident Evil is we want it to feel alive. Uh, and the way that we achieve that is by having um, so the other is there are other survivors that are out there as well as us. In this case, it's Jill and Rebecca. Jill yeah. and Rebecca are both out there. It's not just us. Now, just because they're off camera doesn't mean that they're actually safe. They're not like chilling out in the main hall having a cup of coffee and wondering what you know what us are what we we're up to. They're also running around the mansion trying to survive. Now that means we represent that we automate our NPC characters by having given them things called missions, which basically means that might be a supply run, that might be they're going out there to look okay. for like a secure and escape route, or they might be hunting the bodies to set fire to or whatever else. When we spawn a mission, uh, we're basically going to flip this card over. Now this one, I'm just uh, going to quickly grab yep. and flip over for us, or you can do it, which is, uh, it's send a sign. So your radio bursts into life, a grainy voice breaking through the static. Stars Alpha Team, send me a sign. Basically, you reply, but it looks like your radio is broken. So basically, we've found another, you know, we've had some signals uh, of I another survivor who's out there. So we're going to start a mission and see if we can save that character. So first of all, you have to choose which one of these lovely ladies you want to send out on that mission to go do that, because we're obviously busy in this particular now, part of the mansion. Now, what is this that they have there? Uh, is that so healing? you can send Jill or Rebecca. Uh, it's not going to make too much difference to... Yeah, so this is this doesn't make too much difference to them. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to draw from the encounter deck, the one that we put the enemies down, and the key icons we're looking for are the ones yep. at the top. Do you remember you said clues at the start? We're looking for those icons there. Those icons dictate um, how many clues they find and how many Got wounds it. they suffer while they're out there. These characters can die on this mission. If they get five wounds, their their health is the same okay. as ours, then they'll die. If they don't, uh, they get the moment of clues, then something good will happen could choose to abandon if they want as they go along if they're taking a lot of damage but that's really up to uh, out. that's really up to you we're going to send away our healer because okay. that always seems like a good idea rebecca you're <laughs> yeah i like your style and also yeah everyone's probably saying vote rebecca in the comments about now so that's good all right to rebecca draw cards. can prove her worth okay so let's start drawing cards from this deck then 
Yeah, I'm going to uh, draw them over for you. So, uh, all right. So wait, we're going to draw cards and to, uh, characters. Found four more clues or abandons the mission. Okay. Yep. Uh, so basically, what have we got? So the first one is a star symbol that doesn't have any relevance here. Okay. So that's nothing for so us. Keep drawing from the enemy deck, right? This, so this just draw the deck. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a way. To... Yeah. So at this point, you yeah, can, we'll I'll move it over it. here. And yeah, I'll move it over here if you want to save us. Because uh, to... we may have to reshuffle these, I'm guessing. Yeah, no worries. Uh, you've got it. Nope. That's exactly why nothing. I've been restacking this as we go. Uh, nothing there. Uh oh. Wound. It's a wound. Right. So Rebecca's been attacked while she's out there. So at this point, you could choose to stop if you no, want. No, Rebecca's if you think fine. Rebecca's she's still a good to go. We can keep on heals. going. She like heals naturally. Nothing on this one. Yeah. Not oh, two that. clues. Yeah. Boom. Two clues. So, two more required, and we're good to go. So, let's flip the deck Why and then shuffle them. Stacking? Stack. Oh, because oh, the card before uh, it wasn't stacked. Is the problem. Okay. Okay, I've got that one. Uh, there you go. That's done now. I mean, I, I don't want to beat on Tabletopia anymore, but oh, it's so much harder. <laughs> All right. All right. So, nothing. Mm -hmm. A wound, so she's taking two there. wounds, but she's halfway to her goal. Uh, she doesn't. She yep. doesn't stop. Oh, I already got it. She, she doesn't stop just because she got a little okay. wound. She's on cautioned health. Uh, that's one more. Three quarters of the way to her goal. There's the third one. There it is. Boom, 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 boom. Tremendous. Cool. So there you go. So because she's found it, uh, you get to do the good part of the card, which to save you reading, means you have found this Sweet. member of stars. I'll let you flip it over and do the real. You have found Brad Vickers. Congratulations. Brad completes Brad, you're safe. Uh, draw Dave a number chose of reveal. cards from the tension deck yep. corresponding to the total number of reveal clues without resolving them. Return each card to the bottom of the deck in any order of your choosing. So basically, he's just somebody else we could send out on a mission. So she found Brad. Nice. You've got it, yeah. So if you ch if you ch if you chose to abandon mission because Rebecca's getting too wounded or whatever else, then Brad is removed from the deck because he's died because basically we didn't go save him and therefore unfortunately he's been so these are by player characters. And so there's these definitely are player decisions for this. But you can also yeah, so they, are, they can so be allied. As they well. are. They can, exactly and they work as supports. Now in between scenarios, any characters you've found you can actually switch between those characters and use them for your next scenario. But if they've got wound tokens, what you would do is, let's say this is Rebecca. I'm going to switch out to Rebecca in the next scenario. You basically, before the start of the scenario, you'll suffer a number of wounds, i.e. move your track down okay. according to how many wound tokens you've got. So she will now start off the next scenario at caution because so she got wounded while she was out there looking He's for He's going to start the next one wounded? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Now, do you yep. lose your ammo and stuff like that? <clears> that, <throat> which is that why stays gone too? To uh, it depends which ammo, which weapon you're using, but yeah, absolutely. So obviously you'll hang on to yep. things like clips and stuff you don't use. Your handgun bullets will generally reset because otherwise that's just super unfair. But stuff like shotguns and everything else, you're trying to ration Got out it. your ammo because you don't want to use it too All much. All right, so I've done one action. I'm going to do two actions, three to open the door. Yep. Yep. And, and four yep, to go it's unlocked it. one way. That's cool. Because why would I not? Yeah. Exactly. All right. Cool. Uh, we can actually remove that card, so uh, just leave it as an open yeah, door. Yeah, it's still a one-way so door, but that. you don't need to know that because we're already... Not like we're going back through it. Is that correct? Oh, no, won't you actually open the one-way door? It's just discarded. Like, it's just locked from ah, one side, it. so we've just unlocked it effectively. That makes sense. So it's all good. Cool. Well, it does in Resident Evil World, anyway. I can see your logic. Of otherwise, no. Why would that be? I mean, that way? if I'm in my but house anyway, and I unlock are. the door, so, uh, and then now somebody reactions? can keep coming through it, right? Like, that makes sense. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Okay, that makes sense. Cool. Uh, so over to you for uh, attention, so, card. And I think um, we're on the home straight now. Michael Newsom says so healing schmealing. By the way, that, that is uh, <laughs> a direct quote from Michael. All right, it's all clear because. Bar uh, for well, Barry. I don't know. Oh, Barry's oh Barry's lost his touch. His uh his his shooting has not been as good lately. I think Barry uh, got into the uh, alcohol over here. That's fair. He's the, we thought he was burning zombie corpses with it, but oh, he actually just started drinking it. Yeah, you actually remember 
somebody had a hip flask. And right. went, oh, wow. And they started drinking. So uh, I've just gone to there. No reactions from me. Uh, I'll switch this over and see what we get to. Nothing. Nothing to worry about. Uh, cool. I think that's us done because you can trade an item with me uh, during your turn. I think that's your four. So one, two. Oh, no. You can't quite get through yet. So we've got one more tension. That was your move, by the way. You went one, two, three. Oh, I was I indeed. Uh, that's right. Yeah, because you can trade for me to get the sword key. Uh, open this door. So that'd be one to trade, two to go to here, three to open the door, and then so four to step through on the opposite side. Next mission, and won't you give you enough time to finish it. Mission? How does that all work? Uh, you'll need to find. So you, so um, fuel fuel containers. You'll need to go out and find fuel. Yeah, basically uh, kerosene. Um, containers and so on and then basically okay. refuel between scenarios their items so it might be one of the item functions you flip over it's like an oil drum or whatever else that you can top up with and they'll have a number of kerosene tokens you can use um and yeah stuff like that so there'll be limited amounts of healing but basically every resource is precious and you need to kind of basically hang on to everything and play gotcha. a very but resource management we kind get of way. new ones so i'm burning the corpse before i it's leave it's a true because... campaign barry's barry's not done killing oh yeah absolutely yeah this is a one shot you can do whatever you want barry yeah, you can you can share all the lights. Yep. In the room so that's one, one uh, to burn the corpse, two to move, three to get the key, four to open the door. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Done. That's it. Uh, then just tension card, and this will be our last one. Oh, because you don't have to do one after you've left. Yep, exactly. So in my turn, one, two, right, three. So back I'm to out. Me. Done. Uh, one, two, I'm yep. out. Myself, yeah. I Very was thinking about it. I was thinking about going back, opening yeah. the door, shooting some well zombies, but uh, <laughs> we will uh, we will uh, keep it the way it is. So we got a hashtag uh, Sabbath Forest out there. I don't understand the reference from Sean, but uh, I assume you do. Uh, it's a safe oh, save forest. The forest. Uh, he's trying to save a character <laughs> from, uh, from the Resident Evil game. Yeah, safe forest. Yeah, because they're, they're, they're trying to save as much forest as they can. Nice. Uh, well... everyone, everyone, everyone loves forest. He's kind of turned into nice. Rambo in our well, narrative. Well, I so. think Barry needs to get his due uh, after that. Uh, Barry's already oh. been saved. Barry already survived. Barry's out. He uh, survived earlier today. Nice. He made it out. All Barry's right. good. Barry's going to make it. We need him. He's a pilot. Uh, yeah, we need to find a Barry's helicopter. Barry's a pilot and get out. with an attitude. <laughs> it's he can Barry. do everything. It's Barry. It's, it's Barry. Just, the rules. Uh, all right. So, if there are any questions while we've cool. got you on, please feel free to ask now. Whether you're in the campaign or whether you're from our community, we'd love to get any questions. Um, I mean, we've certainly been answering as we've been going. So, uh, campaign. We're at what one and a half million at this point. Uh, let's see. Uh, I would need Close to, to I'd need a quick look myself. You're right so. there. You're on the precipice, and we okay. just moved. So, okay. yeah, I think we're getting closer as we speak. Uh, four days to go in the campaign. Um, so, what are the pledge levels here? What can we What can we get? So, you've got two levels. We yep. like to keep it nice and simple for these campaigns. So, you've got Bravo level. Uh, these are references to the two different styles teams. Bravo level is kind of your um, the, the starting pledge. Uh, that'll get you a copy of the game, plus any uh, exploration yep, and milestone goals that we unlock. Uh, you've then oh, no, got said, Alpha yep, pledge. I see that? Oh, my Sorry, gosh. Go there's so much in this Alpha pledge. Holy cow. Are you uh, yeah, kidding cool. me? Uh, and then you've got the all-in, which is the alpha pledge, which has everything built into it. So you've got two big gameplay expansions with two uh, fairly sizable, massive base monsters that have got 80, 80 mil bases mil? Um, <laughs> each. So there's four. That's, that's pretty big. <laughs> so so that, yeah, they're pretty big. Um, so they obviously take up multiple squares, unsurprisingly. Um, so then you've got those guys. Uh, obviously has a whole bunch of new tiles in it. They've got about seven or eight hours of content, each one of them as well to bolt into your campaign so it ends up being close to a 40 hour campaign um if you want to play through from beginning to end um we've got a retro pack so if you're an old school resident evil gamer uh, then basically you can play the game it's got a copy of every single card in the game being old school 90s graphics with all the old school menu styles and the pixelated images and everything so it oh, feels wow. just like you're playing it in your old playstation and you've redone if you're an old fan like me style? then that is the only way to play yeah, we did it for RE2, oh RE3. Gosh. It's massively yeah. popular. Right. Our community loves that stuff. 
So, uh, so that's that one. Uh, we've got a cosmetic upgrade for 3D terrain. So you've I got mean, doors on, that actually open want. and shut. I was like, that sort of stuff. I, I was shocked uh, you didn't corpses. lead off with that. So you got 3D terrain pack, yeah. you got game trays upgrade, and you got neoprene mats. Like, I feel like you've hit the yeah. like trinity of like things that every gamer wants nowadays. <laughs> yeah, kind of. I like, obviously, yeah, stuff like linen finish and that stuff is just built in anyway. So yeah, absolutely. Those are the upgrades, you know, the, the sort of more cosmetic so the shape box? stuff. I see that in so, there. Yeah. All right. uh, so the monster, bo monster box is basically a copy of all of the monsters in the core game again. So in the core game, you'll definitely have enough that you won't ever run out of monsters. But as we saw earlier on, when we had that tension card that I drew that we couldn't resolve, um, if you run out of monsters, if you just says, hey, spawn these monsters and you can't do it because you've already got a maximum amount on the table, you draw from the tension deck instead. A monster box lets you change things up a bit. And it means you'll never run out, but oh, you have nice. to deal with larger hordes of enemies. That's good. And plus also, it's Resident, it's Resident Evil. There's so many people who love things like the Hunters, for example. Well, they want they just want extra models for that stuff. stuff like so, that. you know, obviously let's make it available to them. You've got it, exactly. That's really yeah. cool. Okay, um, so we do have a couple questions. Light says, what is the next board game you'll be doing? Uh, wait, next for Resident Evil... It will be Resident Evil Zero or Resident Evil Code Veronica, uh, and would you Veronica. do a Dino Crisis yeah, board I game mean, in the future? I, uh, I would love to do all three of those games. In the <laughs> so future. we're going to leave it at that. Um, we don't know what licensing is, um, and I know I'm sure you probably haven't worked out all the licensing stuff. And if you had, maybe you'd spoil it, but I don't know. Uh, it depends how much I want to get China shouting at me, uh, and I'm pretty sure right now she's kind of watching and waiting <laughs> for my response there. So no, I, I, I won't. I don't want to incur the wrath of uh, of, mar well, of our marketing team or our licensing team. Um, yeah, I would and love it's to hard, make all right? three of because those games. when you're um, when you're a publisher, you don't want to put things out too early. Designers, we want to tell you things the minute we start working on them. Let alone when we get done. It's like, do you get do you believe what we get to work on next? Um, but until the game's done, you really don't want and you don't want to hear yeah. about it now anyway. I mean, think about uh Seafall. Do you do you remember Seafall by Rob Davio? Mm. Yeah, so that was his le legacy thing that came after Risk Legacy, I think. Maybe even after Pandemic Legacy 0. I can't remember. But he mm. ta started talking about that thing the minute he went independent. He was working on it, working on it. It was like three or four years of him working mm. on that game. So by the time it came out, there was all this hype built up, all this stuff. People had to wait all that time. And then it didn't live up to people's expectations because there was so much hype built around it. So, and, at, you know, as a designer, he may have even said to himself, this game isn't as good as I want it to be, but I can't leave these people for any longer. So sometimes you end up rushing a little bit or whatever else. So it's better to let, you know, I don't know if you know uh, Blizzard Entertainment, the video game company mm. but i mean no personally yeah, so but their I'm big thing no is them, the yeah. game will be done when it's done right and so not telling people what you're working on next mm. years and years in advance lets you really work on it and fine-tune it and hone it and really make that better game for for them um mm. so it, it's it's better for you the purchasing audience if we don't let you know stuff ahead of time i think a lot of times um because that lets us make the best game I think, um, yeah, that's fair. I mean, there's a there's a company that uh, sadly isn't around anymore in the UK here, but called Spartan Games. Who used to make yep. like miniature naval combat games, and and their thing was you know exactly the same as what you're saying. Super excited developers and designers going, oh my god, we're working on this thing next. It's incredible, and unfortunately, they would tell us as soon as they started working on it, rather than you know the actual game then comes out five years later and everyone's kind of forgotten yep. about it because there's so much hype initially when they announce it. And then if you don't hear anything, well, it kind of outside our mind, right? People don't realize how games take to so I, I definitely not only design, but develop and, and go past that. Mm. I mean, we've had games we've been working on for 10 years now. Um, and then certainly, even when you get into the, yeah. you know, we talk about it all the time as designers, but, you know, I'm done the first 90%. Now I just have 90% more to go, right? <laughs> it's like that last 10% takes forever. Mm. Um, yeah, right. You know, it's just the little tweaks, the little balances, the little, uh, you know, icons, things like that, just figuring out where everything needs to go what needs to stay in the game what doesn't isn't necessary um just to fine tune it and hone it to be the best it can be yeah. and you could tell when games don't do that because they come out and you know they they don't do as well post launch you know it might get a bunch of buzz up front but because if people don't like them 
then they're not going to come back and play more. Obviously, you're on your third iteration of Resident Evil games. I'm right. sure they, you know, you're doing things to improve them as you go along as well. But you know, you've obviously done well with the first two, or you wouldn't be doing a third game in the series. Right. Yeah. So exactly. um, that's my long way of saying you'll find out when you find out. <laughs> Uh, Vampiric Scythe says, uh, are we going to see what the advanced models look like in uh, for the dead characters? Could do. I mean, honestly, that might be a bit spiteful, though. Kind of going, hey, these guys didn't make it. You yeah. sure you want to see those models? Um, like, it's, it's a difficult one. Like, it's it's... One of the things that we've kind of had is that, obviously, there's lots of meaningful decisions as part of the Resident Evil campaign. Um, in terms of which characters you get and you don't want to get. And I appreciate some people, they're a very passionate audience, and a couple of people are like, well, I really want this character, and it didn't happen, they died, and it really sucks. I can't think of anything would worse it look than like, Here's what the well, model would have looked that, like. But then you'd have to pay that, sculptors yeah. to design something that you're never going to use, right? So I... Uh, do you know, oh, we've already you? done, we've so already you done already that have part. the models. We already made... We, 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 we made all of these models in advance of the Kickstarter, so that way so we'd be able to show them as soon as they got unlocked. Is there way, and I mean, again, I don't want to bring anybody's hopes up, that maybe they could be released as something in the future? Because you've done a, a lot of the work for them, right? Could there be a character pack or something like that? Yeah, that, that, that they could be. That's a conversation with Capcom. Yeah. I certainly want to make any promises. Purely because one of the things I'm very wary of doing is we have an all-in pledge. It would take a lot for us to then say, hey, right. The all in isn't actually all in. Like, there's this one extra box that kind of came along after it. And I definitely much get community sentiment, but I think there's a few other cool things we can do. Um, watch oh, in, guys. There will there be something, uh, which kind of hopefully will make you happier with some of, you know, if you are a bit bummed out that one of your characters didn't make it, um, uh, then something is will be Wesker coming. Wesker going to be a playable figure in the game. Nice. 100%. Um, nice. And then, or, or an enemy says uh michael so that was michael's question so playable really so, good question yes. the answer is yes <laughs> I, I'm, no, no, I'm no, not, not the enemy I'm part just, just the really answer is yes he's going to be playable <laughs> uh, uh so saber wolf yes. says sherwin can you pick up ma 121 close on game screen and zoom on xd wow this is like really technical uh so i can decide so so, so the so the ma the ma 121 is the uh is the oh, umbrella okay. name for the hunter so uh, i could i could absolutely zoom in but i don't think you can you're so not seeing my screen that? so i think yeah, that's probably more me. asking if you can zoom in on that one that's oh, the this hunter one? right in the middle of the uh right in the middle of the boom yeah that guy so here's the model all the way around So if this is your decision point on whether to buy the game or not, I would say you have to get the uh, the higher level, right? That way you get twice as many of them. Uh, you will. You'll get a whole bunch of them. I mean, there's four in the core game, I think, so you're going to end up with eight of these things running around, which, given how much trouble that one caused us, is probably too lethal, right. but it's and, certainly uh, going to be fun. You know, well, you'll get better as the game goes along, right? You're going to find more stuff. Yeah, you're gonna oh, you're gonna find grenade launchers and flamethrowers and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the best thing with the flamethrower is zombies. You know, setting them on fire. Nice. They are not leaving corpses after that. So you don't have to um, also so get very, your very lighter out. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh wait, <laughs> no, cause, yeah, <laughs> yeah, cause you're, yeah, exactly. Well, you could actually use your kerosene to refuel the flamethrower. So that actually saves you, yeah, you know, some twofer. Like, hey, I've got spare kerosene. Now I can weaponize setting you guys on fire. I can turn you into walking corpses. Oh, so uh, I'm sorry. Saberwolf wasn't deciding whether he was going to buy them or not. He was deciding on whether he was going to buy 20 of them. And then he says, yep, buying 20 of them. <laughs> Sherman knows who I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I do. I, 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 will, I will happily say to you, you're an absolute lunatic. I mean, obviously, I'm not one to step on your enthusiasm for it. I know... You are a very scary man, but thank you if you do decide to do <laughs> and that. And I tell you, it's very appreciated. I mean, all you need is one berry to take out twenty of those hunters. We know that. Yeah, just rolls, <laughs> just, just walks around with his mag uh, and everything. Can we play the uh, demo on Tabletopia? Says 
Uh, that's a lot of characters and, and numbers. So I'm going to just say G says, can we play it? And the answer was yes, right? Apparently from the Kickstarter page, there's a link. And actually, Indeed. Hold yeah, on, it's on I'm the Kickstarter, to the Kickstarter page. page right now. Don't want to keep people from the Kickstarter page. Definitely go. There's a link in the show notes. But I'm going to try to get the link to Tabletopia there and put it. Uh, should be down the bottom. It's a blood splats in more memory. Uh, thing in memory serves. Says play the All Tabletopia right. demo. You guys have a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff on this Kickstarter page. Holy cow! You've done this before. I could tell. Um. It's not. This is oh not my our gosh, first rodeo. The amount of stuff you're getting in this game is ridiculous. <laughs> When you say scroll down to the bottom, you're not kidding. Um, so is it all the way at the bottom, you think? Uh, it's... Uh, oh, I no, need to no myself. worries. One second, let um, me see if I can... Uh, then there is a rule book, how to play a turn, how to explore counters. Ah, want to try it's, the game, click on the it demo. It should be there. It should Boom. be where the rule book is. All right, I've got there it. There you go, do that. So, uh, I have copied it, and I am putting it in our show notes as we speak. So it will be there um, in about half a second. Boom. And boom. Done. Uh, Play on Tabletopia is in the show notes cool. right now. All right, cool. Well, I think... Oh, wait a minute. How many hunters can Barry kill? The answer? Yes, says uh, Vampiric Scythe. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely true. I think we've seen that today. Barry answer. does not have a problem uh, with any of these things. Although... Let's be honest, we didn't actually kill him. So, uh, but Barry's a tryhard at least. You know, he he went through uh, not only his starting ammo, but two clips of ammo trying. Uh, even if he doesn't succeed, Barry's just going to keep shooting. That's what Barry does. Nice. Yeah. All right. Exactly. Well, thank yeah. you so much for joining us today. Oh, I just realized. Oh, my gosh. I just realized I have your name behind you. So people didn't see Sherwin oh. the entire time. Come on, people. You could let me know that. I messed that up. Yep. Hold on. Well, and now I fixed it, and I didn't switch it. There we go. Now everybody sees Sherwin. They see your name in the corner, um, just as we're about to end. Um, all right, Sherwin, thank you so much for everything today. I think our audience really is going to appreciate this. Hopefully your audience did too. They're definitely all in. They're very excited about this, I can tell. And uh, after playing, I'm very excited to play more as well. So I'm um, looking forward to, to doing more. Awesome. Fantastic. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, and thank you very minute. much for having right, me. Of course, now people are asking questions, right? Uh, Light oh. SG one says, will uh, Wesker oh, okay. get an advance card? Uh, depends All if Wesker right. wins so their vote. The answer. So He's go in. vote, vote early, vote often. Oh my gosh, everybody's now <laughs> like last. It's like when you're at the doctor's office and you're yeah. there to ask about Viagra, but like you know, you yeah. say like I got a back problem or something. It's like <laughs> as you're leaving the door, it's like oh by the way, <laughs> that's the oh by the way questions we're getting right now. Uh, as we're getting out the door, people are, got all these questions. Wow. All right. Uh, so Timothy said uh, this is actually an important question here. Uh, Timothy says, "What's the difference between the last Resident Evil?" board game in this one cool so uh, a whole bunch of this is to do with the exploration so the way that we've been laying out tiles as we go uh, that's not in the in okay. the other two resident evil versions we've done um so the other thing is the exploration uh, sorry is the encounter system works slightly differently uh so we have lookup tables uh for the other stuff which is slightly different to the card system we have here um Obviously, there's different characters, different enemies with slightly different stats and so on, but the core engine is the same in terms of the three phases and the sort of, you know, what's underneath the hood. Um, but a lot of the other changes, stuff like, you know, not burning bodies, um, that's not in those other games. Um, and then the biggest thing is the puzzle mechanic. So one of the big things about Resident Evil is we have um, some of our scenarios, you have to resolve puzzles in order to pass them. So it might be you have to hit a bunch of buttons in certain sequences, or you have like a puzzle that's part of it where when one light is illuminated, a certain amount of doors open, and then if you push another button, those doors then shut, and then a new one's open or whatever else. There's quite a few lots of different moving parts of how we vary it up uh, and basically um, really refine the game experience gotcha. that much more. Apparently, um, I opened the link... I, the link I shared uh, was to a game that I had started, not to your game. So I'm getting that fixed for everybody out there. Sorry about that. Um, but no, that's cool. Sure. I, I think the no, exploration no thing is a big deal, right? Because um, gamers mm. like to explore. 
You know, it's like opening up a new treasure chest or whatever else. I don't want to see what's coming up ahead. In fact, I remember um, when uh, Jaws of the Lion came out, that was one of the complaints I heard from our community was, Mm. I love the book, right? Because the map's already put together for you, everything else. Mm. But they were complaining that they could see ahead what was in the next room. Like, they'd have what's on the spawn point. They'd even see that. So I said, well, if you just take a piece of paper and cover up everything past the door you're in, you don't see what's in the next room. So it was an easy fix, but I do right. know, I mean, just from the the outcry of people, that that is something that is important to gamers. So certainly having the exploration element, I think is a huge yeah. boost. And I'll be honest, I hate lookup tables, so I am happy that you did it in a deck of cards now. That, I mean, even though it's maybe just a cosmetic change, it's still a big deal. Well, it's, it's one of those things. The lookout tables allowed us to have very uh, unique and very characterful scenarios because they were something which we could input into those. Um, you know, exa- yeah, if we want this enemy to be really zombie heavy, then we can make the lookout table just have loads of zombies because that's, you know, because we can tailor it for every individual scenario. But what we kind of found was there's there's actually remarkably few situations where you really want to take advantage of that. Um, and I agree with you. They are something which can detract away from the experience if you don't make it a quick transaction because you're kind of looking at another page while I'm being stuck in what's going on. The thing the card deck gives us, which is one, it's super straightforward to just set up and then leave rolling throughout the entire scenario. But the crucial thing that happens as well with, with this game is as you go through the campaign, the decisions you make, you know, who you rescue, if you might find a door that's slamming open and shut, you know, there's loads of zombies behind it. You choose whether to keep it open or you have know, to open it and deal with the zombies zombies or leave it behind they add extra cards or remove cards from the tension deck and the encounter deck so as the if you make decisions about leaving loads of zombies roaming around well, guess what your encounter deck's going to become much more dangerous because yeah, you're shuffling of zombie cards into it if you're burning loads of corpses yeah if you're burning loads of corpses and dealing with zombies then it's actually be a lot safer because you're going to take out those cards and that, that means that we have this evolving state where every game every campaign is completely unique but also, it means that you're really storytelling with this thing and it's growing and evolving uh, in a distinct way based on what you're doing, which feels really, really organic and really nice. So that's a big strength uh, for what that sort of system allows yeah, us no, to do. Yeah, no, that's really cool. And I mean, honestly, it's unique and innovative and new. I haven't seen something quite like that where the enemy's activations are triggered or, or affected potentially by something on an event deck. Um, so it's really neat. I like those special actions that characters take and uh, how it how it changes throughout the game. You know, I've seen a lot of different fiddly things for doing what you've done very simply. So, and I'm always for that. Anytime you can simplify game design, I think it's uh, really good. And you've actually provided all designers now oh. a new tool for doing something that we've been trying to figure out for years. So I, I think it's very clever and, and unique. All right. Cool. Well, that's uh, that's right. very nice. Thank so, you. Uh, Michelle says, uh, thanks so much for the play and Q&A. And then I'm going to end on this one. Vampiric Scythe. I, I had to read out the full name because you'll understand after I read this question. Vampiric Scythe says, how about a hand-to-hand mode for Resident Evil? No weapons, just fisticuffs. <laughs> and to that, I'm going to say, it's berry time. <laughs> Do you know, very time. <laughs> it's very time. <laughs> yeah, Resident Evil MMA right. edition. He's just ready. Nothing, yeah, okay. All Barry, all the time. You want to see a corpse pile? You come see v- Barry. He'll uh, he'll help you out. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thank you so much for joining. Uh, I noticed there's uh, another question, but uh, all right, one more, one more. Uh, Light says, "Will there be items left in storage boxes in the board game, like the video game, where Barry helps Jill a lot?" The answer is yes. Yes. Awesome. That's one of the mission cards. The answer is one of the mission cards. Uh, if someone is doing a mission, uh, they can basically go find supplies for you and leave them for awesome. you in the iron box. Thank you, Sherwin. I appreciate it. Great seeing you. Uh, great getting to meet you, play a game with you, and uh, thanks for designing a great game. And I, like I said, four more days, people. Four more days. Check it out. Fantastic. Thank you for having thanks. me, and hopefully we get to Bye. this again soon. <laughs>